Um, in accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, uh, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and available for viewing over the Lunenburg Public Access YouTube channel. The town of Lunenburg in response to the COVID-19 uh, is uh, currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health, Mass Department of Public Health and the CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread in all town facilities are currently closed to the public. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, all public meetings are being conducted remotely this meeting will be able to be found on the Lunarburg Access YouTube channel within 24 hours after the meeting. To participate remotely on Zoom, members of the public may use cell phones, tablets, or computers with audio and video capabilities. Uh, the Zoom meeting ID is 899-396-59675. No participant ID is needed. Just press pound when asked. All participants who are not members of the commission or staff will be muted by the chair. Computer and app users may use the raise hand feature to request to speak. To access the raised hand feature, open the participant list by clicking on participants. To raise your hand, click on the button at the bottom of the participant list. The chair will call on you and unmute you. Um, Telephone auditors may dial star nine to request to speak after joining the meeting. Members of the public must give their name and address before they begin speaking. Please direct all comments to the chair. Let me admit these two people. Oh, good, Ken's joining us. If you have trouble accessing Zoom or have general questions, you can send an email to lcc at lunenburgonline.com during the meeting. Emails containing questions or comments that are to be read aloud at the meeting must be signed with full name, address, and phone number. Let me unmute Ken. Okay. Please be aware if you're using videos, other people will be able to see you and anything that is broadcast will be recorded. The agenda lists all the topics which may be discussed at the meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as results of these discussions. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by open meeting law. Each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. So now that I've read the script, let's make sure everyone can uh, hear me uh, and speak. Uh, Ken Jones. Present. Uh, Rich Bursch. Present. Katie Childs. Here. Uh, Carl Luck. Present. Uh, Jack Rabbit. Present. Uh, Jeff Viviano will not be joining us tonight. Mike LaRouche, associate member. Here. Present. Uh, Matt Murrow. Present. All righty. Is there any um, comments uh, from uh, the commissioners? Rich Bursch. Bob, as you uh, read out one way to put your hand up, uh, there must have been an update at some point to Zoom. Yep. My raised hand feature is no longer in the participants list, but it is in the reaction, under the reaction button. And that's an excellent point. And uh, Rich actually educated uh, some members of the Board of Selectmen last night during the Selectmen's meeting to that too. So, so, um, in case you can't find your raise hand button, it is under the it is under reactions. Yeah, and it all depends upon what version of Zoom you got. So, yep. uh, all right. So I have more people trying to get in. Yes, I do. Let's admit all. Okay. Um, are there any other comments from the commission? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, if I could uh, just share very briefly with the members. I did have a chance, my wife and I and a couple other couples, in fact, Mike and his wife, we went out and toured the uh, Lane properties. Uh, actually, there were tons of kids out there. There were well-behaved doggies. It was a beautiful day, a little cooler, and the bridges all appeared to be intact. But I think that one of the things that struck me was we owe a kind of a debt of gratitude to the Lunenburg Snow Riders 
you know, the Peter Charpentier Bridge is holding up beautifully. That was a significant construction. In fact, if you look at most of the bridges, including the stuff that you've been doing as well, Mr. Pease, thank you. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's turning into a one beautiful place. And I do really appreciate all the efforts that the volunteers have put in and the, the snow riders have done an outstanding job. And I, and I wanna really say thank you to them. And I, and I hope we can find a way of expressing it. The, the second part is that, again, Michael and I are uh, traveling together. I don't know why he wants to do this, but we're taking alpha classes together. And in this, this particular case, we're taking, uh, taking winter tree courses and uh, learning something new all, all the time. But what they, the professor did do is he presented us with a definition of a tree that's been uh, recognized by the International Union of Conservation of Nature and Global Tree Specialties Group, the GTS, and officially divide, uh, defines a tree as a woody plant with a single stem growing to a height of at least two meters. And if it's multi-stem, it also has to have one vertical stem that's two inches wide. Now, the reason why I bring that up is I think I would ask, and I'll put this into it and perhaps it can tie into something that Matt handed out to us. If we adopt that definition, when we talk to people who are petitioning to take trees down, we use that international def definition of a tree. And that will help clarify it because I know we've been out on site visits where some people said, well, we gave you a tree count, anything over eight inches. And uh, no, that's not what we wanted. So if we could, Mr. Chairman, can we put that on the agenda and include it with uh, Matt's information that he's just brought into us with, from the town of Concord? They're, they're very timely, they're very relevant. And if we could get that on the agenda and fairly soon, if we could, that's all. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Jack. Okay, so you're all set. Uh, okay. At some point, we'll have to uh, put uh, regulations. Uh, Bob, can, do you know where that noise is coming from, or am I the only one hearing it? No, it I sounds like many dishes or something. Uh, I can't. Can anybody tell looking at the screen where it's coming from? No. Oh, my. <laughs> I don't know where it's coming from either. All right. Um, if, if anybody can tell, you know, looking at the screen, sometimes, you know, it'll, it'll light up or something. Or where it's coming from, let me know. Um, and I'm looking at who's the only people who aren't muted are uh, Greg, other than members, are, are, are Greg Roy, and that's about it. Oh, Jack, and no, that, that's it. Everybody else is muted so, uh, that I can see. So Bob, generally, if I had this issue, I would go through and mute and then unmute people and I could tell who it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, have someone else to admit. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to announce uh, that um, uh, the maps, the draft trail maps are all done. Um, uh, the draft website is just about done. Uh, and I hope to have the website live uh, by the time we meet uh, in two weeks. Um, uh, but it's basically done now. I just have to reach out to five landowners asking for their permission. Uh, to have the trails on their land uh, show uh, on the maps. So, um, but we're making good progress on that. Congratulations, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Good job. That's awesome. Um, any comments from the public? If you have a comment from the public, please raise your hand. We'll wait about 20 seconds. And then we'll go into approval of minutes which I forgot at the last meeting. Um, I'm looking for a motion to approve December 2nd. So moved. We have second. A second. Second. Thank you. Roll call vote. Uh, Ken Jones. Aye. Rich Bursch. Aye. Uh, Katie Childs. Aye. Carl Luck. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. 
And I for myself. I'm looking for a motion to approve December 16th. So moved. Thank you. Second. We have a second. 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 All right. Uh, Ken Jones. Aye. Rich Bursch. Aye. Katie Childs. Aye. Carl Luck. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. And I for myself. And January 13th. Uh, I went through them today. I finally found uh, a couple of Scribner's errors and uh, uh, a, um, he referred to uh, that uh, one section was deferred to the next meeting when actually it was deferred to, uh, to later within that meeting. Um, and so um, is someone willing to make a motion to approve those? Mr. Chairman, I also had made some uh, feedback to Matt. I don't know if they were incorporated or not. Or... Matt, are we ready to vote on those? Um, I can incorporate Carl's changes, yes. <coughs> are, they, are, they, are they mostly Scribner stuff, Matt? Yeah, I, it's just a couple of minor inserts. Everything looked fine. Okay. I'm looking for a motion. I would make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, January 13th. Thank you. Second. 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 All right, uh, Ken Jones. Aye. Rich Bursch. Aye. Katie Childs. Aye. Kyle Luck. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. And I for myself. And Mr. I don't believe we have any minutes for January 20th yet. Mr. Not Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just uh, for the record, the, the minutes, that was January 13th, 2021 on the, the agenda. It's listed as 2020. Thank you, Ken. Good catch. Uh, appointment, Eagle Scout proposal for Proctor Park. Who is here for that? Raise your hand. Do you know who that is, Matt? Yeah, he just raised his hand, Brian. Yep. Ah, there you go. Weidman. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. There he is. Brian, can you... Uh... No, hello. <laughs> Howdy. How are you doing? I'm doing marvelous. That's good to hear. So, um, want to go through your PowerPoint here? Sure. So, everybody I, see have it? A, I have an Eagle Scout project proposal for the, well, the commission here. Uh, next slide, please. So a little bit about myself. I am currently a life scout at Troop 1728 Lunenburg, Massachusetts. I am my troop's current outdoor ethics guide, and I am a sophomore at the Winchenden School. Next slide. So my motivation for this project is while visiting multiple conservation areas in the town, I noticed that uh, Proctor Park does not have a trailhead kiosk, and it is very hard to locate from the road. So I decided that this would be an ideal Eagle Scout project for me. Adding a trailhead kiosk and a sign will make Proctor Park more known and attractive to the residents of Lunenburg. So the basic description of this is I will build and install a trailhead kiosk to house trail guidelines and a map at the entrance to the Proctor Park Conservation Trail. So the location of Proctor Park is it's on Elmwood Road in Lunenburg. Like right there. And as you can see from these pictures there, there are no sign, signs or any information. And the conservation trail is very difficult to locate if you're driving by, especially in the fall when the leaves have fallen and <clears throat> the little driveway park area is covered up by leaves. and potential signage with a kiosk signs and information, the conservation land is easier to locate. So if you're going, you're driving by looking for it, you can see the kiosk and identify that it, that is the trail with a sign there that tells you the name of the trail. So you're able to identify it easier. Uh, and the entrance signage an engraved rock at the entrance will help visitors find the entrance to Proctor Park. And the 
One on the left, I believe, would be a better choice, although both are good since it is simpler and quicker to read and it allows for a bigger font. And that right there in small picture is what the current rock looks like. Uh, any questions about the project? Um, I have a question about your uh, kiosk there. Yes. Um, uh, do you have a design for that kiosk? Yes, I do. I want to base it off of the design shown right there since I like it a lot and it provides a bench for you to sit on when you're either entering or exiting and you need a quick break. And what's the, is the roof made out of, uh, what's the roof made out of? Uh, metal. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure steel. And um, are you looking for uh, us to fund the kiosk and the rock engraving? Uh, no, I have, I'm looking to fundraise myself. I'm just looking for approval to work on the land. Okay. Um, any other questions from commissioners? Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. I, I think this is a, a, a great um, proposal. I think, you know, the signage at the street on the rock is, is really awesome. And I think the kiosk with the bench is a really cool idea. Um, and I think this is a piece of property that, you know, is probably used by people in the area. And I think this would be a great addition to that um, to probably draw some more people in. So I'm wholeheartedly in favor of it. Uh, Jack, you were going to say something? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wholeheartedly support Ken's uh, statement, and this is an awesome project. The only question I would have is, uh, Brian, does this support very many cars parking there at all, or is there where where do people park? Uh, there's a like an entrance there. It's quite wide. Okay. So right. I'm when we went to go take the pictures, we were able to pull up and there was enough space for possibly two to three cars to park there, still okay. leaving space for the signage to be seen and everything. Mm -hmm. So if, if you think this needs for additional parking, perhaps we can get some help for you there and mm -hmm. that up a little bit, but that's your call. You tell us, Thank you. Mr. Chairman, with your approval. I, I think that's a marvelous idea, Jack. Other uh, questions or comments from uh, commissioners? Uh, Greg, Greg Roy. Thanks. Just uh, I move to uh, to tell uh, Mr. Weidman that uh, Dillis and Roy would like to help you participate in some uh, some materials costs. So you can uh, you can reach out to me uh, via email if you'd like. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Mike, Mike, Mike LaRouche. Yes, congratulations, Brian. Uh, just uh, so you know, uh, I was once a, a life scout myself. Uh, never made it to Eagle, so I encourage you to go ahead with this project and, and all those other merit badges needed to uh, become an Eagle Scout. Uh, what I would add, and um, as I'm looking at the current signage, uh, the tree in front of the picture on the left, if you're passing by, it would be nice to have a little hiking insignia. Uh, you've seen those signs along uh, trails uh, that show a hiker with a walking stick. I'm wondering if that could be something you could uh, add to your project. Um. Um, just as if you are going by, you would alert people on the roadway that there's an actual trail uh, going to where your kiosk will be. Um, Brian, I would also mention that um, I'm, uh, I have a grant from the uh, Ma uh, Massachusetts Recreational Trails Program uh, the grant is going to pay for um, uh, colored trail markers. Um, it's going to pay for um, uh, a, a sign uh, that'll go at uh, probably on your kiosk uh, that's a map of the property. 
Um, and uh, also the map will be on a, a website and that'll be up and running probably in about a couple of weeks. Um, so um, this is a terrific pro project that's right in sync with, uh, you know, with a grant and we're doing that on all the conservation uh, lands that have currently have trails, there's 10 of them uh, in town. So uh, this is a terrific project and it's very complimentary, you know, to the grant. Because I was not, I did not, was not planning to fund uh, a kiosk uh, for this location. And, and I love uh, Mike's uh, suggestion, you know, of, you know, if we had one of those hi hiking symbols there, because it makes it apparent when you're driving by it, you know, 40 miles an hour that, uh, you know, there's a hiking trail there. Yes, and I agree with that. Any other comments from commission? Any uh, comments or questions from members of the public? Uh, looking for a motion to approve this project. To chairman, I would make a motion that we, uh, we approve the project presented uh, by Brian um, and give him our blessing to uh, to do this. Second. Uh, roll, roll call vote. Ken Jones? Aye. Rich Bursch? Aye. Uh, Katie Child? Aye. Carl Luck? Aye. Jack Rabbit? Aye. And I for myself. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Yay, Brian. Good job. Thank you. Uh, Central Mass Goat Rental. Someone here from Central Mass Goat Rental. Tammy. I assume Tammy, that's Tammy Herbert. And Seth Herbert. I uh, ask Tammy and Yes, we're here. Unmute themselves. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna first of all, let's stop the screen share here. Hello. So um, who's, who's gonna speak, Tammy or Seth or both or? Tammy can speak first. I'm just still trying to turn my camera back on. Okay, go ahead. My camera can't work. There we go. All right. So I guess we're looking for permission to continue doing our hikes on the conservation land and uh, what, uh, you know, what it entails to, you know, to do, to keep going forward. Uh, can you give a little more explanation here? Uh, so we've been doing the hikes on the conservation land uh, with the goats um, for about how long now, Tim? A year, over a year, we got permission in the beginning and uh, we got a letter. You got permission from who? Tim? Uh, from, we went to the office. I, I can't hear a word you say. She went to the the, uh, the conservation office in town and uh, we got permission uh, to conduct hikes with the goats from our property that abuts the conservation land. And uh, when the land, the land use changed thing, we got a letter in the mail about a month ago or so saying that we had to reapply for permission or, you know, of course, attend this meeting to talk about being able to continue doing the, the goat hikes on the conservation land. Uh, Matt, would you care to comment on uh, what Seth just said? Well, if you recall at the last meeting when this issue came up, I had noted that it wasn't uh, I wasn't aware that um, there was a fee being charged for this. And normally civic hikes based on groups that don't charge a fee don't normally require permission the way the land use regulations, or at least my understanding of them were, that um, organized groups that were going to charge a fee needed permission, hence why they're here to correct that deficiency. And if we look at the current regulations, are there other requirements if someone's going to, in our current regs, um, if someone's going to charge a fee to hike on the land or any insurance requirements or anything like that? Nothing I'm aware of. Okay. 
And of course, we are fully insured for, uh, for you know, we have uh, the goat rental business that we do where we bring the goats from house to house and uh, do, you know, poison ivy removal and stuff. So we do this in the off season when the goats aren't working to, uh, you know, it costs them a bunch of money to pay for the goats for the hay and stuff like that. So it's just something to offset that. And, you know, the people started really liking it. So it's something that, you know, definitely brings in a little bit of tourism into Lunenburg. Um, questions or comments from commissioners, Jack Rabbit. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Seth and Tammy, can you describe a typical goading out expedition? What happens? People show up, you all grab a goat, you put a saddle so, on. I don't <laughs> so, base, so basically what we do is uh, the people come to the hub. We have a scheduled time that the people show up and uh, it's a, a COVID safe thing. Everybody's masked up. You know, of course it is now, you know, in the previous, you know, before this time, before, you know, our, we, our last hike that we did before we restarted was um, just as COVID was kicking in. And, uh, but so now it's a COVID safe environment. The people show up, they, uh, we come down to our, you know, we get a small barn down, down here and everybody meets up. We give them, you know, a kind of a rundown of what we're going to do. And there's a little bit of a hill on our property. So we walk down the hill on our property to uh, a gate on the fence where all the goats are and we'll unload, uh, you know, between six and 12 goats out of there that, you know, or, you know, these goats are all, you know, uh, hand raised goats. So they're very friendly and, you know, handleable. Uh, we let them out into a little chute and then they are just released into my yard. And basically once the, uh, you know, we've got everybody let out and everybody's ready for the hike, we just, start walking through the woods and the goats follow among the people they walk you know with the group of people and we do a big loop through the conservation land which takes about you know if you know if it's all like the younger people it takes maybe about 45 minutes if we've got you know some older people in the group we slow it down a little bit and and you know basically we walk from uh you know if you're familiar with the 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 laurel bank area you know one side is a little bit of town land and then you're the conservation land so it's kind of a loop that goes from one end of the sand pit to the other side of the other side of the dump, um, and then back around the the pond, which you know it's a pond during the summertime, and and then back up to the fields and back up to our house, and uh, then we load the goats back up into the fence, and we give them the story of you know how the land was donated to the town and the. And uh, you know the you know the foundations that are there and where the house used to be and you know what was you know what kind of a farm it was, so it's kind of a you know a neat little adventure for people getting out into the woods. Seth, did you ever run into anything with dogs or dog problems or anything like that? Uh, we have run into people with dogs on the trail. Uh, there's a gentleman who walks um, a group of little chihuahuas out there, and it's kind of funny because the dogs don't really know what to make of the goats and the goats don't really know what to make with the, the dogs. But again, the goats are very docile and, you know, they're not really, we've never had a problem or anything. Uh, Ken Jones. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Jack. Were you done, Jack? I'm done. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ken Jones. I, I just, you know, I think personally, I think goats are awesome. I think they're cool little animals. Yeah. Um, I think this is a, a, a good use. I, I can't see any negative impact on the conservation land um, to have people out there. That's what it's there for. Um, and I think, you know, having the goats there, you know, adds a little bit of, of, you know, curiosity factor and it's, it's pretty cool. Um, that being said, we've got, you know, invasive plants on some pieces of conservation land. I didn't know if, you know, at some point, you know, if we needed a, a goat or two here or there, um, maybe we could work out a deal or something like that um, to, to help with some invasives on conservation land. Um, no, that's that we've, we've, we're absolutely interested in doing anything that, uh, you know, the only issue we ever, the only big restriction we have with putting the goats is, is the mountain laurel. Okay. Um, there is a, a fair amount in the laurel bank there that we have to guide them around, but it's not something that we can't deal with. We, you know, we fence the, you know, we have small sections of fence that sure. we can fence, fence off stuff like that. But 
Yeah. One, one piece in particular, there's a, you know, huge amount of bittersweet and poison Ivy, which I know the goats love both of them. So yeah, I just, their, you know, main, their main diet. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be, I think that would be a pretty cool thing if we could work something out, but um, I, I'm, I'm in favor of, of the goats on uh, the Laurel bank. And I think, you know, personally, I think we should give them approval. Uh, any other comments or questions from commissioner? Carl Luck. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, this this sounds like a, a great thing. Um, I just uh, want to make sure while the current regulations in place, I think we we could do some tidy up uh, just to just to cover everybody here. Um, so I, I would be in support of this tonight. But I, uh, the regulations uh, require evidence that the police have been notified, and also um, proof of insurance. And I would like to suggest that. Uh, presuming a positive vote tonight that uh, those be provided to Matt. Um, both of those things be provided to Matt before the, uh, the next. Uh, That's not a problem journey. on our end at all. Anything else, Carl? Nope, that was it. Thank you. Uh, Jack Rapp, you got something else, Jack? Uh, yeah, just a question, Mr. Chairman. We currently, and I believe in our regulations, uh, don't allow anything that's uh, revenue generating for the parties that are performing the, the function. Uh, are we waiver? Are we going to a wavering mode? Well, let, let, let's, well, well, let's see what it actually says, Jack, before we start uh, okay. talking about waivers. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll I have it in front of me. Uh, uh, let me call on Rich while I'm looking. Go ahead, Rich. Um, so while I don't have a problem with the goats and the, um, the touring on the property, I think we should just make sure that it is a valid use of the land where it is designated for passive recreation. And this is a business venture and an organized activity on the property, just to make sure that it is something that is allowable. And how would you suggest we do that? Um, well, maybe Matt can contact DCR. Okay. I mean, I guess, it, it, I mean, I just want to kind of cover our bases where it is a business venture. I mean, somebody else may come along and also have a business venture that they want to do on the town's public property. So that, those are my concerns. Again, I don't have a problem with the activity. I just want to make sure that it's, uh, properly documented and permitted. Thank you. Yeah, that should be easy enough for me to go. Um, is there any comments or questions from the public? Well, I'm looking for my copy of our current land use regs. Oh, that's because I'm looking in the wrong folder. <laughs> When you find it, Mr. Chairman, it's paragraph 2.9. Says You just won't buy it. 2.9, the bottom of that first page. Organized or commercial events which charge fees are not allowed without commission approval. So we don't need a waiver, Jack. All we need to do is approve it. Okay. Um, uh, written approval and the act must be given by the commission at least 21 business days in advance. The written permission should be carried by the person in charge of the event at all times. Uh, the chief police will be notified and evidence of the notice provided to the commission proof of insurance liability coverage must be provided to the commission at the time of application. So I guess I'm looking for a motion to approve uh, subject to the uh, proof of insurance liability coverage, uh, notification of uh, the police and um, uh, verification uh, by Matt that this is an allowed use um you know on uh, as as passive recreation so Mr. Chairman, just just one clarification on that before we move it um is is this will it meet the 21 um days or do we need to include that in the motion uh well i'm not
Do, will you be using uh, it uh, within 21 days, Mr. Hebert? When's your next, uh, well, when's we, your next we, plan but go hike, Seth? Uh, well, we were allowed to we we were allowed to do a goat hike this week. This past weekend, we did donation based, um, and uh, and we can continue that. You know, uh, you know, you know, as uh, as long as that's fine with you. We're not, you know, we're just looking to do this the right way. Uh, we don't want to also well, I, make you. We don't want to make you guys think as though we're are just using the land either. We're we do quite a bit of cleanup out there too. We, uh, you know, today we threw away two yellow bags full of couch cushions, and then I slipped one in my boss's dumpster at work. Don't tell Mark, but, <laughs> okay. um, but we, uh, we, you know, we do do, you know, a ton of little maintenance out there, and we like the use out there. It's it's uh, it's nice to have this little piece of gold behind us. So, um, I, I personally do not see a, a need to make them wait 21 days. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just I think we should include it in the motion that we waive that. All right, so Kyle, you're gonna make that a motion. I make I make a motion that we um, that we approve this um, uh, waiving the 21 day requirement and providing that uh, proof of in, uh, insurance and uh, evidence of notification of police be provided to uh, to the agent um, within the next week. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, hearing no further discussion, roll call vote. Ken Jones? Aye. Rich Bursch? Aye. Katie Childs? Aye. Carl Luck? Aye. Jack Rabbit? Aye. And an aye for myself. Uh, you know, just be aware, um, Tammy and Seth, that we are going to change our regulations. I'm not quite sure when, uh, but we will be changing them. And so, you know, you have to stay tuned to see what happens when we change the regulations. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I would say that we had uh, the Herbert's goats here at the Woodlands Village uh, for our poison ivy and oriental bittersweet, and they did a great job. <laughs> Thanks. That was, one of, that was one of our first season jobs. That was uh, when we were just learning. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's quite the adventure now. <laughs> well, it's quite the adventure. Uh, my wife and I spent time chasing down uh, uh, escapee goats. It, <laughs> it was quite the adventure. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That was our first uh, our first uh, introduction with the uh, the mountain, the rhododendron that one of our goats got into and got him sick. And it's the same as the mountain laurel that you got to keep him out of. You know. Okay. All right, let's move on to our public hearings. Um, continue public hearings. The Conservation Commission will hold a uh, public meeting on a request for determination by Christopher Oldham for work at 32 Pine Grove Road consisting of tree removal. Greg, Mr. are you Mr. here Chairman? for that? Oh, Seth, yeah. I'm gonna put your hand down. Mr. Chairman, before you get started. Yes, sir. Um, I missed this hearing at the last meeting and I, uh, I signed a Mullins form and Matt has a copy of it in the office. Yep, yeah, Mullins forms were submitted. Um, so he's good to go. Thank you yeah. so much. That's perfectly acceptable by the applicant. So I appreciate that, Ken, thank you. You're welcome. Um, get that, thanks, uh, Greg, Greg Roy, Dillson Roy. Appreciate your time, I'll try to be brief. Um, we're, um, we presented this a couple weeks ago and we had some, um, some feedback from the commission that um, that I requested uh, that we continue the meeting for. So I had the chance to uh, really do two things. One, to talk it over with the cl my client, but also to have an opportunity to meet with a few members of the commission on site um, who wanted to, to take a look at it, uh, which we did on Saturday uh, on a very cold morning. So I appreciate, um, let's see, I think it was Mr. LaRoche, Mr. Mr. Luck, and Mr. Rabbit, who were out there uh, with, with uh, the client, myself, and, and Matt. Uh, so thank you very much for that time. And um, I found it very productive. Um, really, we're proposing three things that are different uh, um, and directly at the um, relating to what was uh, requested of us at the last meeting and, and discussed a little bit further at the site visit. So I'll just summarize those for the folks that weren't there. Um, 
the first thing is uh, there was a there was a question over our uh, there was a concern over the fact that we're proposing to remove six trees, rather large trees, uh, within the between 50 feet and 100 feet of the buffer zone. Um, upon further uh, inspection and sort of giving it more thought and working with the uh, the three folks that were on site, um, we've reduced the number of trees that we've been removing by three, um, and we would just be limiting a few. Um, uh, a few of the trees that have some dead leaders and a few leaders that are hanging over the uh, hanging over the in the direction of the of the house and the structure and we've indicated that on the plan so we've taken them off the um, uh, the removal schedule we've clearly noted that that they're to be saved um, and there are a couple of the the, the larger trees so I, th I think that was a, a positive development um, second um, it, it, again directly um, relating to as requested at the opening meeting, uh, we explored the possibility of putting a walk, formalizing the walkway down to the to the water. Um, and so, what we're, what we're proposing, we, and we depicted this on the plan as well, uh, we're proposing um, there should be a revised plan, uh, Mr. And, Chair. And, and Greg, uh, look, looking, Matt, you, you have a, a revised plan from Greg? Yeah, it should be in the file. Um, and looking at the file, um, I get um, there weren't any of the other, other people uh, see it because I, I don't see any files more recent than uh, uh, I got a two, three picks. Yeah. But other than that, if I take and I look at, uh, I got a folder dated 1 4 and a folder dated 1 13, and the files in there are dated 1 13, which would have. Let me check. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm seeing the current I, drawing. We're in the same place, Mr. Chairman. I didn't see him either. Let me I, check. Oh, I'm seeing them. Uh, I see them on mine. There's later than 113, Carl. There's a pint. Um, on on 113, there's a revised plan. There should be one that's uh, revised Monday to to uh, February 1st. Yeah, we don't have that one. We don't have it. Okay. Uh, I see that. Yeah. Well. Can, I'm just uh, checking for it. Email, Greg, can you email it to me? Uh, yeah. Um, or can, we can let Greg share his screen if he's got it. I, up. I, I'm happy to share my screen if it's if it's acceptable. And then I can email it afterwards, however you'd like to go uh, handle that, Mr. Chair. Well, let me see if I can do that without uh, giving up control on meeting. Yeah, I think you could just say uh, allow multiple participants. Uh, no, I'm gonna have to go into security settings. Uh, so now let me see. Bob, I found the plan. I'm just gonna throw it up on the cloud. Just give me one minute. All right. I think I can. I think I can share it now. Yep. You able Looks to, like it. Everybody yep. able to see that? Yep, we can see it, Greg. Okay. So, so, um, so let me let me back up a little bit. Then um, we had um, we had six trees scheduled for removal. Um, again, outside of the fifty and within, but within the hundred foot buffer zone, and we have removed. Uh, we have we we are now proposing to save uh, N O and P. And we would just be doing some selective limbing. So you can see right here um, on, uh, if we added a note right in here that says trees in O and P to be limbed only. So we'd just be catching a couple of the dead leaders that are on those trees and a few leaders that are um, kind of pointing in the direction of the house. Um, then we, um, we added a walkway there's a there's an existing uh, at grade uh, concrete patio that exists here. It's sort of a trapezoidal, almost triangular shape. So we're proposing a walkway uh, that would that would come down the steeper portion of the of the site. Uh, we're proposing to use some pressure treated uh, timbers for treads, and uh, in the middle we'd use some some crushed stone. So we'd we'd formalize that pathway to, to um, uh, mitigate for future erosion problems that might uh, that might come into play or to, to avoid future 
erosion control problems that might come into play by more frequent use of that area. And then um, I, I said this to the members that were there. I, I, um, I hesitated bringing it up because I hate bringing up 11th hour things, but um, my client expressed interest uh, when I was talking to them after the last meeting about uh, adding an elevated deck to the, to the property. Um, and, um, you know, I'll say it again here, you know, we're, we're more than happy to file that separately, but we thought that there was an opportunity here since we were outside of the 50 foot clearly uh, and in an area that was previously disturbed um, to add that to the plan um, to allow him to just, just sort of streamline the procedural track here and not have to come back to you at, by a separate filing. So I have added that deck. Uh, again, it would be elevated um, over the patio that's there and, uh, and adjacent to the sort of uh, on the same elevation as the existing deck that exists here on the side of the house, uh, which is at the first floor elevation of the house. And it would extend 14 feet out and then uh, be the entire width of that uh, house and deck. So it would just sort of be a wraparound, uh, end up being a wraparound deck. Um, and then we showed a staircase that would come off on this side, um, taking advantage of some of the grades, uh, higher grades that are over, over in that location. Um, so that's it. Um, other than that, the plan remains unchanged. And I, I, again, I did do like to, would like to thank the commission members for going out um, on a cold Saturday. And I think that was a productive, uh, productive session. Happy to take any questions. Uh, questions or comments from uh, commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. first of all, I would like to express my appreciation to, to Greg and the owner. Uh, th this was a really good work through session. You know, we, we presented problems and concerns and there were ideas flowing around and we we're freezing our butts off. But Greg, you did a great job. Uh, I take my hats off. You, you guys are really good. Uh, I have no problem with the, with the deck at all. And it's elevated. It's over an impermeable area already. Uh, the walkway made tremendous amount of sense, and saving those trees was the right answer. And uh, I really thought it was a very positive experience. I don't want to do it again at that temperature, but Greg, thank you. Really, thank you. Thank you, uh, Jack. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Carl. Um, yeah, just that I, I was also there, and it was a very, uh, very open um, and constructive discussion. I appreciate the uh, the owners and, and Greg's input. Um, the the walkway down um, to the uh, to uh, fit nicely and you know address which will be a it would be a future erosion problem. Uh, I have no problem with adding the deck on this application. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, <coughs> As you said, it's all it's all disturbed and concrete underneath that deck already anyway. And the stairs coming off the deck will be cool because right now the only way down there is a path that's really badly eroded. It's very steep. So um, I, I think it's it's all good and I would support it as proposed. Uh, Richard Bursch. Um, I have no problem with the addition of the deck. I just had a quick question for Greg. Uh, where that new deck construction and stairs are being done in the uh, the zoning setback is that still allowable? Uh, it, it, it thank that's a great question. Uh, we bolt we actually bolded the wrong property line here, Jack. Um, so this thick line is actually not the property line. It actually sits out here. So okay. actually, actually the uh, both the existing deck and the proposed deck actually are dimensionally compliant. Okay. All right. Just worry. We're adding that to the the application. So if they're both outside the setback, that should be fine. Um, the other thing I did have to note was, and Matt can maybe expound on this a bit, uh, the doc does require um, filing with the state under chapter 90 or 94. No, it's, it's chapter 91. 91. And yeah, I did check on it. Um, prior, there was an exemption for temporary docs. But in checking the regulations, the last time we had this issue was in 2016. Apparently in late 2017, they, they uh, changed the regulations and closed out that exemption um, due to too many loopholes with it. So instead of refining the, the loopholes, they just closed it out altogether. So are you saying, Matt, that now they do have to apply for chapter for 91? Yeah, now anybody in a great pond 
uh, in town would have to apply for the chapter 91. And our great towns in great ponds in town are Whalem, any Whalem and Massapog. And Massapog. Thank you. I just learned something. So th that, like I said last meeting, we're, we'll we'll uh, we'll follow up this this process with that with that file. We'll do the applicants aware of that, and we'll uh, we'll make sure we get that filed. So I'm happy to we're happy to accept that as a condition if the commission is. Carl. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, um, I I did check on that um, just in case this was the, the uh, result. Um, I had taken a, a workshop uh, with the DEP on this issue, and there is a, a very nice procedure that they've developed. It's a self um, self I don't know, fulfilling prophecy. You just fill out paperwork, and uh, the first requirement is to have gone to conservation. So as a result of tonight, there should be no problem with filling out that uh, self determination. So uh, you might want to look into that, Greg. Yeah, it was like an abbreviated application process. You're right, Carl. I checked on that. Actually, it looks pretty easy. Right. All right. Are there any other comments or questions from commissioners? Are there any comments or questions from members of the public? I'm looking for a motion. This is an RDA. I, I move we approve the uh, application as pre presented. We have a second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, roll call vote. Ken Jones? Aye. Rich Bursch? Aye. Katie Childs? She's muted. Ooh, she must have dogs or something. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, Katie Childs? Aye. Um, Carl Luck? Aye. Jack Rabbit? Aye. And I for myself. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Good night. Greg. Good night. Uh, the Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent by Thomas Wu and Scott Benjamin for work at Map 137, Parcel 12, at Fire Road 12 for the restoration of the buffer zone. Uh, it's my understanding we're going to uh, we have a request to continue, Matt. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct, Mr. Chairman. I'm still waiting for the drawing. All right, do we have a motion to continue? So moved. Second. Someone got a second this? Katie seconded. Second. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, uh, roll call vote. Ken Jones? Aye. Ken R Rich Bursch? Aye. Katie Childs? Aye. Carl Luck? Aye. Jack Rabbit? Aye. And I, I for myself. Uh, the Conservation Commission will hold a request for a notice of intent by Proctor Masonry for work at 203 Fire Road 16 for the construction of replacement tanning walls and removal of trees affecting the current wall structure. Who's here for 203 Fire Road 16? Yeah. So I'm going to raise their hand. Isn't that Matt Proctor's project? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see him on here. Have you any idea who's going to rep be representing uh, this project? Should have been Matt Proctor. Yeah, um, okay. I'll tell you what, I'll text him and see. Because he's got three of them on here, right? Two. Two. Yeah. Um. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Since we don't have anybody, can we? Um, can I make a motion that we uh, continue this till later in the meeting and take up the next hearing? That's a great idea. I would make that a motion. Second. All right. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Uh, Ken Jones? Aye. Rich Bursch? Aye. Katie Childs? Aye. Carl Luck? Carl Luck? Aye. Um, Jack Rabbit? Aye. And I for myself. Is 75 Ruth Street mats or not? No. 75 no. Ruth Street? Yeah, so let, let's do 75 Ruth Street. 
The Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting on a request for a notice of intent by Richard Pearson for work at 75 Roo Street for the construction of replacement septic system. Mr. Pearson, I know I saw you. All right, and you're not even muted. I'm here. All right, let's uh, see if I can't find your plan. And Jack is muted as well. Bob. Jack Maloney? Yeah. This is 75 Roost Street. Let's share the screen. You guys see the plan okay? Yes, we do. All right. I can never tell because when I move it between monitors, does it still show or I, you know, so <laughs> any rate. Uh, Mr. Um, Chairman, Jack Maloney is still muted. And let me find my uh, participant screen here first. Okay. Participants. Aha. Uh -huh, there we go. Participant screen. Jack Maloney asked to unmute. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry, it took me so a little long. It's that's all right. I was going to raise a note to have Matt unmute me, but that's all right. <laughs> you can't do it. He's not the meeting host. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, who's going to speak? Is it going to be Jack? Is it going to be Richard? Who's going to speak here? I will. All right. Um, I'm here on behalf of uh, Mr. Pearson and the uh, plan on the screen shows a, an existing uh, two bedroom dwelling. We're going to upgrade it to a three bedroom house, uh, which means that we have to upgrade the septic system. So basically we are putting the proposed septic tank in the same area as the existing cesspool and uh, close proximity to the existing leach pit, which is shown uh, just a little bit south of where the, uh, the tank is now. Um, once the effluent comes out of the tank, it'll be going into a set of uh, concrete leaching galleys, which are partially under the uh, parking driveway area as noted. Um, we are outside the 50 foot buffer um, with this project. Uh, if you guys are on site on Saturday, I believe you could see that everything to the north side of the garage and the house is a very steep uh, hill, so we couldn't really go that way and we couldn't go back towards the other side of the house, which is the lakeside, but his well is also there. So we're kind of pinned into this, uh, this section of the property here. Um, the galleys that we're going to be using underneath the driveway as well as the tank are going to be rated for traffic, uh, H20 loading as noted. Um, we are asking uh, that three trees be removed. Two of them are uh, twin oaks that are right in the five foot over excavation area uh, at the edge of the system. And the other one is uh, just between the house and the existing shed. It's actually growing right next to the shed that Mr. Pearson would like to, to take down. And those are noted on the plan uh, TBR to be removed. Um, other than that, we're not doing anything else to the property and just basically upgrading the septic system. Any comments or questions from commissioners? I assume you uh, site walkers visited here uh, this past though uh, on Saturday? We did, Mr. Chairman. And the observation was there really wasn't any wiggle room for anything. You know, uh, it's sad they have to lose some trees, but we didn't, at least I didn't see any alternatives, Carl. No, no uh, I didn't. I didn't see any alternatives. There, there was only a question on trees and potential replantings. Right. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I stepped away for a second. Did anybody? The last I looked on the state website, there was no um, DEP number for this. There is one. One just came in the other day. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yep. Um, 
208-1213. Perfect. And was there, I believe there were no comments. Was that correct? I'm pulling it up right now. And yeah, no comments. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it said no comments. So. Mr. Chairman, uh, pertinent to Carl's comment with regard to the uh, addition of trees, we were, we were wrestling with what was the replacement schedule? Well, wh where are these trees to be removed? Can you uh, help, help me identify where these trees are? Okay, so do you see where the existing shed is? The existing shed right here? Where it says uh, existing shed, yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, so the top left-hand corner as you're looking at it right now, it says 20 inch, well, I guess it's a twin oak, uh, which is right off the corner of that shed. And then there's a, another uh, twin oak that is, um, so where the distribution box is, where it says DB1, if we were to cross over the system and head towards the, uh, the lake right there, it's right in that five foot shaded area for the septic area. So are they within the 30 foot no, disturb, no, no disturbance zone? No, they're just outside the 50 foot. They're outside the 50 foot? Correct. So Jack, why are we talking about replacement trees? I'm not sure that we knew that they were outside 50. Uh, was there, within that leach field, wasn't there one that was coming down? Perhaps I'm wrong, but uh, in that leach field area, were there a couple trees in there as well? Uh, yeah. And there, those are noted on the plan, Joe. Uh, those are Jack. Part of the 50 as well. Okay. Those, I'm, yeah. Those are right. Those are closer to the 50 than the one up by the shed. Right. Why were we talking about that then, Carl? <laughs> Why were we? What was it? Okay. It might be if it's outside the 50. Yeah. Uh, and Matt, didn't Matt make some suggestions with regard, Matt? Did you make some suggestions as well as in terms of moving them down, putting the trees further down the hill? Well, you had discussed a uh, potential replacement of maybe a couple of trees with the uh, applicant planting maybe two. Yeah. And you guys had discussed potential locations. I suggested maybe down closer to the marsh. I think Carla suggested on the other side of the peninsula. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought in front of to, to the, uh, I guess, north sure. of that shed that's right on the lake would be a, a good spot. I, I, I thought that, uh, maybe I was wrong, I thought the uh, homeowner was uh, amenable to, to putting a couple, I think, did you say red oaks or? I, or I think we're talking red maples, maybe. Yeah. Oh, red maple, there you go. <laughs> oh, red, right. red maple, that's right. Are there any other comments or questions from commissioners? Are there any comments or questions from the public? I'd like to ask one other question if I could. Sure. Uh, it's more for the future, but what's the protocol on maybe paving that driveway down the road? Is there any issue with that or? Driveway. Right now it's an all dirt driveway going into the uh, existing garage from the road. Is, would I be looking at any issues if I were to have that paved down the road or? You'd be looking at an RDA, I think. Okay. Yeah. You have to file a new RDA. Okay. If you're paving over your septic system, I, I believe it might require a vent. This one does have a vent um, okay. off the southernmost end of the system. Uh, we have a, a vent line that's shown. You could just barely see it on the shared screen at the, the word proposed, proposed vent. vent. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. It's so, right uh, under that tree. Yeah, there you go. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is uh, an NOI. Uh, there were no comments. Uh, I'm looking uh, for a motion. Unless there's further discussion. Would the resident be uh, rich? Would you be willing to put a couple of maples down? A I'll, put a, I'll, I'll put a couple of maples in, yeah. Okay. I have no problem, Mr. Chairman. I'm still looking for a motion. I would move we accept the drawings as presented with the addition of a couple of other uh, red maples placed and that it, we would accept the uh, removal of those trees. The three, I believe. Jack? I, I, think, I think both of them are 
twin oaks, twin 20 oaks. inch twin oaks. So, okay. so yeah, there's four of them. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, roll call vote. Ken Jones? Aye. Rich Bursch? Aye. Teddy Childs? Aye. Carl Luck? Aye. Jack Rabbit? Aye. And I for myself. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you, guys. Great, night. great dog. Thank you. I love the dog, Rich. <laughs> have we had any contact with Matt Proctor? I have not heard back from him, no. Um, I think we're going to have to uh, continue the public hearing that um, we already uh, opened and continued to later in the night to uh, the, uh, our next meeting. And the same thing with his, his, uh, his second public hearing here. Unless you have a different idea, Matt. Um, no, I mean, you know, they're, uh, they're important enough projects. He should be here. Yep. Yeah. And we can um, to the next meeting. I mean, it, it, it's with the snow we just had and the snow we got coming. I don't think he's going to be constructing these anytime soon. So I don't think yeah. two weeks out is going to hurt it. And Mr. Chairman, there was also discussion with regard to, we anticipated there was a better drawing coming. I don't know if that's been conveyed to Matt, but I, I think it would be okay if we push it out. Oh, that was for one of them. The other one had an engineered plan. Oh, okay. Yeah, the... And yeah, that's still fine, Jack. Uh, I'm looking for a motion to continue 203 Fire Road 16 uh, until a date certain February 17th, I believe. I would make that a motion, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, do we have second. a second? Second. Uh, roll call vote. Ken Jones. Aye. Rich Bursch. Aye. Katie Childs. Aye. Carl Luck. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. And I for myself. Um, the Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a request for a notice of intent by Proctor Masonry for a work at 36 Cushing Lane, consisting of the construction of a driveway. Um, seeing as how there's no one here for the, is there anyone here for the applicant? I'm looking for a motion to continue until February 17th. You mean 16th? February, no, 17th. 17th. Yep. 17th. I would make that a motion, Mr. Chairman, to continue. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Roll call vote. Ken Jones. Aye. Rich Bursch. Aye. Katie Childs. Aye. Carl Luck. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. And I for myself. On to enforcement actions at 810. Don't jinx it, Bob. Rolling along. <laughs> All right. Um, Matt, can you take us through uh, the enforcement actions here? Yeah, hold on for a second. Let me pull my stuff up. So um, did we want to do a site walk for the Lemister Road illegal dumping activity? That's a good idea. Mm. Well, can you just refresh us what that was? That was the... Uh, the old farm dump uh, over off of Lemister Road that was on the town land that came up at town meeting. Okay. I, I've i been there. I, The fire chief and I went out and scouted that out the day after town meeting. Um, I, I think it would be worth a visit. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how much we're going to see with 18 inches of snow on the ground. It's probably going to cover up the majority of what you would see. And so I would suggest we defer this until there's no snow cover. I would concur. So let's move on to 90 Roo Street. Okay, his deadline for um, his response is next week. So. Okay. And remind, remind me at least of what, what's going on at 90 Roo? Um, that was the gentleman that had raked the sand back. You guys asked him to follow an RDA. He said he would, and I hadn't heard from him. Okay. Somebody asked him to file an RDA. I, I don't recall asking him. I wouldn't be asking someone to file an RDA for raking sand. But um, 
How about Town of Lunenburg Fire Road? Uh, we just uh, continued the hearing for that. Nine Valley Road, any, any progress with the water district on that? No, I haven't been able to make any progress, but you know, I, I will get it done. What's going on at 615 Townsend Street? Okay, so uh, on that one, um, Val Barros, as you recall, we had a um, situation where we had him do some hay bales and sill fence. We also had him remove some wetlands fill. He did that, but the hay bales and sill fence subsequently failed. And just before we had all that snow, we had a major rain event and some silt went off of the property and into the abutting pond on Mr. Foster's property. So I sent out an enforcement order with a series of timelines. He's already met the timeline to replace the erosion protection on site, as he was told. And he has until um, mid-April to remove all of the uh, earthen materials from outside the buffer zone and complete the loaming and seeding that he done so well over by the pond. So I'm just simply asking for a ratification on that enforcement order. So are you looking for a vote? That's correct. Oh, and then I'm looking for a motion. <coughs> Bless you. Thank, you. Thank you, sorry. So well, I'm gonna make a motion to ratify uh, Matt's uh, enforcement order at... Um, 615 Townsend Street. 615 Townsend Street. I would make that a motion that we ratify the enforcement order. Thank you, Se Ken. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Roll call vote. Ken Jones. Aye. Rich Bursch. Aye. Katie Childs. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. And I for myself. Forgot me. Who did I forget? Carl. Carl. <laughs> How? What do you think, Carl? Hi. Poor Carl. That, that's why I got to look at my list, Carl. Uh, it's all right. Yeah. Um, who made the motion? I did. Ken did. Ken. Okay, Go. thank you. Um, Fire Road 16. Okay, that is the, um, the Keating property. Yeah. Um, I haven't received any word from any of the Keating properties, uh, owners or any of their representatives. Um, I do know that there are properties nearby that appear to be contributing to this and going onto their land. So what I've done is I've sent out um, notice of non-compliance letters to those houses asking them to respond to me. So I'm anticipating that I will have a response for the next meeting and I can update the commission as such. Okay. Thank Mr. You. Chairman? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I'd like to suggest that we, you know, I think that's a good idea of Matt, because we'll probably shake some trees somewhere and get something from the residents. But the, the landowner is still Keating. Um, and I don't think we should just um, allow them to ignore us. Um, perhaps we need to send a, a letter from legal or, or take some other more definitive action uh, against the uh, property. Uh Matt, can you refresh my memory as to why, why Carl is saying Keating is ignoring us? Because I sent him an enforcement order and I get no response. Aha. Uh -huh. Mr. Chairman? Paul ignoring. I could do it. So um, uh, what do you think of uh, Carl's suggestion, Matt? I don't have an issue with it. I, I know that they've been involved with DEP in the past. Would it? be worth a call to DEP to maybe they could call and maybe they could shake something loose. That might be actually faster than trying to go through legal. Um, what do you think of that idea, uh, Matt? I could try it. And uh, if you do that um, by the 17th, I believe we have a, a office hours with the town attorney on the 20th or something like that. So, uh, you know, if, if, if we don't get something, some action by uh, our next meeting, you know, we can always take the town, town attorney route right after that. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Carl. Um, the, the, other op the other option would be to send them the, the, the enforcement letter that we've uh, drafted and approved, which requires them to, you know, appear or be subject to fine. 
Uh, it may or may not get their attention, but at least it's another step and another document that if we do go to DEP or something that we've, we've done everything we can to try to get their attention and, and, and it may indeed get their attention. And how, how would that be different from sending the enforcement order we already sent them, Carl? Because uh, it doesn't require them to, to attend and it doesn't Im include a fine if they don't attend. You making that a motion, Carl? Uh, all right, I will do that. It's a good idea. Uh, I move that we send them a, um, uh, an enforcement letter, the, our, our formal uh, enforcement letter that was approved uh, a month or so ago. Do we have a second? Second. Ah, roll call vote. Ken Jones? Aye. Rich Bursch? Aye. Kate Childs? Aye. Carl Luck? Aye. Thank you, Carl. Jack Rabbit? Aye. And I for myself. <clears throat> all business land use policy um by the way guys that's good that you did that because that actually constitutes ratification at the same time so that was a good move perfect all right uh, mr chairman um yes sir on, on enforcement uh, there was one other thing that uh, was going to get added to the list I, I don't see it was uh, 48 oak ridge oh you know what you're right carl um i did send a letter out um hopefully i'll have an update for you for the next meeting Thank cool. you for uh, Thank pointing you. that out. All and, right, so I'll put that on our next agenda. And Matt, if you can also add the sites that we didn't get a chance to uh, on the last site visit with regard to the little encampments on Lake Shirley, the three of them, we forgot to go. Yeah, well, you guys, is, you're supposed to take me there, Jack. Yeah, I know, like, we forgot. We wanted to get out of it. It was cold. It was cold. It was cold. Oh, no, it really oh cold. no, it was more than cold, but we won't get into the descriptions. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <laughs> that on purpose. I forget anyway, but okay. Back, 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 back to the agenda. Okay, sorry, sir. All right. Um, land use policy. Um, I propose to go at this as follows, but I'm open to suggestion if people want to do it differently. Um, I propose to pull up on my screen, uh, the uh, Adam Costa's version, you know, where, where he went through it um, and use that as our basis and go through it. And if people have other comments and just start at the beginning and go through from the beginning to the end. And then uh, as we go through it, if people have other things they wanna comment as we go through it, you know, that we'll take them up and we'll go at it that way. Is everyone comfortable with that approach? Sounds like a plan. Good. All right. Well, let's try and let me find it. It'll take me just a minute here. Share my screen. Can people see this now? Yep. All right. So he suggested for some reason um, uh, deleting the commission on the front page. Anybody uh, have feelings about that one way or the other? I think it's fine to delete it. Go for it. Yeah. And let me see if he used track changes or if he didn't. Let's see. Does not appear as though he used, oh, accept deletion. He did use track changes. All right. And then he added police department. Yep. I'm going to accept that insertion. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, we're on the page two already. Um, I propose we accept all of his wording changes in this first paragraph. Anybody object to that? No, that looks all right. Mr. Chairman, if perhaps uh, with regard to notification, if we somehow put our email address in there someplace, if someone were to write to the Conservation Commission office, we can give them an email address. You mean on the front of the... Um, Either on the front or in the first section. I, I, I think it should go on the front. My personally, how do other people feel about that? 
Yeah, on the title page or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, that'd yeah be that's cool. that's fine. The contact agent. Yeah. All right, so let's go back up here. So where would we like to see it here? Um, Either above or below the phone number. All right, so let's put it uh, below the phone number. LCC at, at LunarbergOnline.com. You typed LLC, by the way. Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, what? You typed LLC instead of LCC. Oh. Lunenberg Online. Well, that's because I said LLC because. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. Liability Corporation. Lunenberg <laughs> Conservation <laughs> Commission, a limited liability company. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go back now to uh, page two. Um, I'm going to uh, accept his uh, deletion here and his insertion. And I'm going to accept his use of outdoor recreational use. And I think I might have had, no, oh, I'm good with that. In this paragraph, right now it says, all properties for which grant assistance was provided. Um, I went back and looked at the definition, the legal definition in 8C of conservation lands. And the legal definition for conservation lands is taken or acquired for conservation purposes, not just you know ones that have grant. And I'm suggesting that we change which for which grant assistance was provided all properties taken or acquired for conservation purposes because that is what the definition is you know this that's covered by um article 97 of the constitution i think that's appropriate yeah so, bob yes I think that changes the um, the premise of that paragraph. Okay. That paragraph was stating that the majority of the lands were acquired with the help of the land grant program. So now you're adding in taking or acquired. We're not taking or acquiring anything through the land grant program. Well, we acquired it through the land grant program. That's how we acquired it. Yes, but the the paragraph is specific to land purchased with the land grant program, not lands that were taken or acquired for conservation purposes. The reasoning is irrelevant to the grant. If we accept money from the grant program to purchase property, then everything in that paragraph takes place. If there are properties that we did not acquire through the land with assistance of land grant, you should have another paragraph stating that lands that were not acquired through the land grant program, but were taken for conservation purposes, blah, 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 blah. And see, my, my feeling about this, is, but I'm, this is not a hill I want to die on. My feeling about this is that you know, we can state in the first sentence that the majority of the public lands were acquired with the help of the land grant, but that um, all properties, which, you know, taken or acquired for conservation purposes are, are permanently protected by open space under Article 97, not just the ones that were acquired by uh, through the land grant, but I, then, I don't really... Then just I get rid of the land grant portion of it, if, if it states that any any lands that are under our control for conservation purposes are permanently protected, then get rid of the land grant carve out. 
And Mr. Chairman, perhaps we use Adam's favorite saying is care, custody, and control. Somehow they get sprinkled that in there that it falls under the care and custody and control of the Con Lunenburg Conservation Commission. He used that a lot last night. Yeah, but if, if, just to go back, if, if you found that any lands that we have that are under our care and control are permanently protected open space and just get rid of the first sentence that deals with the land grant program and just put all lands taken or acquired by the Conservation Commission for conservation purposes are permanently protected under open space as open space under Article 97. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that's that's appropriate. That, yeah, that's just get rid of that land grant portion of it. What, you don't like reminding people? Yeah. <laughs> Care, custody, and control? I don't think it's necessary. No. And it's just an explanation as to why the, the lands that we have are for passive recreation only, at least the reasoning I put the paragraph there. This and, was in the preamble just to let people know that yeah. all lands we have are protected under Article 97. And, and one of the reasons I was attending to this as a member of the Open Space Committee, um, I'm going through and looking at the deeds for all of the lands um, that, are, that the assessor says are under our care, custody, and control. Uh, because some of them I don't think really are under our care and custody control because there's no deed that says that or there's no town meeting action that says that. For instance, the land uh, along Lake Whalum, that, that paved lakefront. You know, if you look at the assessor's website, it says that's under our care and custody and control. Uh, it's my uh, initial opinion that, that it's not. And that's why I want to take and make, and that's why it, that took, brought this paragraph to my attention, so. But that's a bird walk. Let's get back to this. Um, anybody have any um, objections? Adam's comment on the side says, does the commission wish to commit itself so specific a process? In other words, and excuse me. I, I don't have any, I, I think we do. We, 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 we uh, I mean, I think we do need to want to commit ourselves to so specific a process. In fact, if you look at the process for modifying our wetlands regulations, it says we got to have two televised uh, meetings. And this says we got one televised meeting. So I, I do think we want to commit ourselves to such a specific process. Anybody right. disagree yeah, with that? I, no. I agree. Mr. Chairman, is it, yes, can, you, can you blow that up like one or two more little notches? I can try. Make the whole thing bigger. <laughs> My eyes are killing me. <laughs> I think if you go down to the bottom, maybe, and just mm -hmm. zoom in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Slide that over. No, slide no. the little slidey button over. Ah, uh, this thing? Yep. There oh, look go. at that. Oh, yeah. There we go. go. How's that? Uh, too much. All right. <laughs> we'll try and slide it back some. How's right there. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All right. That, th thank you so much for the suggestion. Excuse me. Delete. All right. And we're going to accept Perfect. Adam's changes here. And we're going to accept his changes here. And we're going to accept this change here. And... Okay, please notify the conservation or Lunenburg police to report these violations, these regulations. Uh, Rich, you want to tell them about the discussion that occurred last night at the select board's meeting? Okay, so um, Selectman Marino brought up a question as to the police assuming our regulations and our powers as enforceable by the police department. And 
I guess it would be if, if that's a question Adam Costa has, it's probably a quick question to have with the current chief of police, if they are willing to help enforce our regulations. One of the big problems, um, and I thought about it afterwards, is we have the authority to write our own regulations and to enforce them. But our only means of enforcement is to take somebody to superior court. So <laughs> if we have no smoking and we want to enforce that, the only way to technically enforce that is to drag whomever um, is accused of smoking to superior court. Um, there are other ways to ticket people, which we can do under the Wetlands Protection Act, which is... Um, and I think it was 40 chapter 21. I forget exactly what Jim had called it. And Matt may know, but we can issue tickets and those are non-civil penalties that we can take to a different court. But any regulations that we have here that we draw up under chapter 40 section 8C are only enforceable through superior court. So, um, Selectman Marino was a little hesitant to say that the police would enforce our regulations or would try to enforce our regulations. And I, and that, and that is what happened. Um, I think that um, I, I'd be happy to talk with the current police chief about it. I mean, I can't believe that the police chief um, wouldn't you know help us by you know speaking to violators and stuff because uh, usually that's all it takes uh, but the point that Jim was making is that if he they can't really issue a ticket and then enforce the collection of the ticket um, Jack you got something to say he's muted oh well, what would you do that for Jack I'm going to ask you to unmute at my own peril. <laughs> yes, always. always. <laughs> uh, yeah, Rich, I agree. Did he at the did Adam at the very end say the town could also pass a bylaw that would ask the police to assist in the enforcement of our regulations? Didn't he say something like that? Um, well, he said that if there's anything that we wanted to use the um, the non-criminal disposition court and ticketing system, mm -hmm. we would have to be passed as a uh, town general bylaw. Yeah, because they said otherwise yeah, it's not it's, at us or something. Yeah, I mean it. I some of sometimes I think you know people tend to write all these rules down but forget about how to enforce them. <laughs> so that is something to think about as we go through these. You know, the cost of taking somebody to Superior Court, from what I gathered from the Selectman's meeting last night with their comments and um, Attorney Costa's comments is that generally is not going to happen. Right. So we do need to be a little, um, uh, a little concerned with what we do write as ru rules that aren't necessarily enforceable or aren't enforceable because of the cost of enforcement. Right. So I, I do believe, and I, and I'm not going to speak for the police, but you know, I, I would imagine <laughs> that they would go through to try to help us protect the properties as best we can from, you know, blatant violations of the properties. Mm -hmm. But I think we want to be a little careful in the, the scope and specificity of some of the rules that we write, knowing that they probably aren't enforceable. Right. Well, the, the topic that hit me was that okay ATVs how do we get the police to help us enforce and write tickets and all the other stuff that would go along with it and I think that Adam gave us the answer we would probably have to go get a bylaw or some sort of a modification of existing bylaw well so, some of that is it comes under trespassing and ATVs legally need to be registered and there may be something in there that says if used on private property, you have to have permission or used on property that's not your own, it has to be permission. So as, as far as ATVs, I think there are other 
legal avenues that the police can um, follow? Have we ever? Other we than ever? asking them to uh, help us stop with uh, uncontrolled ATVs. Mm -hmm. um, Kyle, you got your hand up? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I also watch the uh, selectmen and <clears throat> um, I understand the enforcement issue, but I, I think we, it's always good to be able to enforce these things, but I think we also want to make people aware of, of what, you know, what relations we're looking for. So I, I don't think we should throw things out just because, uh, you know, we're not going to go to Superior Court for smoking. But um, <clears throat> what I heard pretty clear was that um, it's not so much creating a bylaw, but you know, in order to get this, uh, Richard had the right term there, non-criminal disposition process, it has to be <clears throat> given to us in the, at the bylaw level. And there is a bylaw review undergoing right now that I think we, we probably should get some input into and see if we can, uh, if we can get that ticketing <clears throat> process applied to you know, these regulations as well so that we well, do have something that <clears throat> is a, a little bit more enforceable. The, the um, other uh, avenue we could pursue is we have till March 15th to propose something for a town meeting. And if uh, when we get uh, to the end of this uh, at our next uh, uh, meeting with Adam Costa, Matt and I could talk to him about uh, do we need a bylaw to uh, be able to, uh, you know, enforce these fines? You know, can we pass a bylaw that would give the police the power to enforce, uh, you know, these, these regulations? Great. Yeah, I would. He brought it up. <laughs> yeah. I, if, if I may, Mr. Chair, I don't think that was exactly the, the way he envisioned or explained it. We would have to incorporate our um, land use rules as town bylaws. I okay. don't think we would make a bylaw that would and I could be mistaken, but I don't think it's we the town makes a bylaw that the Lunarburg Police Department can enforce our regulations. I think our regulations would have to become incorporated into the Lunarburg bylaw in order for the police to be able to um, act upon it. Uh they, they, and I, again, I could be mistaken. It'd be worth asking the attorney, but I, I think they, they would have to be part of the bylaw. Ken? I, I was just going to say, I, I'd offer up, you know, two suggestions to change this. Basically, the first one would be, uh, please notify the conservation administrator and delete or Lunarburg police to report violations to these regulations. And then add a second sentence that said, at the conservation administrator's discretion, the Lunenburg police may be notified of violations. How do people feel about Ken's suggestion? Mr. No. Chair, personally, I would rather leave it and just ask to ensure that the Lunenburg, um, ask the chief of police that the Lunenburg police department will help us enforce these, at least through just public notification of violators, if so needed. My, my, my suggestion is to leave it the way it is for now. I mean, we're not adopting anything tonight. You know, this is a draft for a public hearing. Uh, we're going to get another pass at it. And in the meantime, uh, later on in the meeting, I'll be asking uh, for authorization to go and uh, speak with the police chief on behalf of the commission. Um, I don't think that's a discussion we want to have in a public meeting. Um, you know, with the chief, uh, will you enforce our, our, our rules? Um, so um, I, I guess I'm asking if can we can would be okay be, would be okay with you if we leave it that way for now and, and then uh, if necessary, revisit it after the public hearing. I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I agree with your proposal. Um, I, I propose to accept all of um, Adam's uh, work changes here. Um, 
Um, I propose to reject all Adam's changes here because um, uh, we, we discussed this at the last time and we said we wanted to have the exact wording from, from the regs. The people feel differently about it now that, uh, you know, cause Adam's taking the same approach that I was initially going to take uh, at, that I was advocating at the last meeting and people said, no, let's have it exactly the way it says in the regs. Um, and I believe at that time we had a majority for that approach. Has anything changed from that? So I'm gonna reject mm -hmm. all of these things. Okay, come on, reject. Mr. Chairman, before we proceed, yes, uh, sir. One thing I don't, I don't know if it comes up here, but um, when I went through it, I went through the other, the old ones, looking for what we might have left out. The one thing that's in the um, passive recreation that's specifically mentioned in the other regulations, the current regulations, is bicycling, and we never talk about it here. And in the current regulations, yeah, that says trail bicycling right here. But, it, but on the old regulations, it's, it, it has a additional requirement that it's only allowed on uh, marked trails. And we don't say that anywhere in this regulation. But we don't tell people where they can swim or fish or hike. Well, I'm just pointing out things that are in the current regulations that we're, that we're not putting in these so that we understand what changes we're making. Well, there's a lot of things in the current regulations that aren't in here. And I appreciate you pointing it out, but I, it's, I certainly don't, I'm not in favor of saying mark trails. That would infer that some trails are open to bicycling and some aren't. First yeah. established trails, Bob? I, I don't think we need to specify. I don't either. Well, then we should, then we should at least Agreed. from the public's point of, point of view, because one of the things we said going into this is that we were going to make the public aware of what she's made uh, with a you know a track change, which is not possible with this now approach. So I, I think we owe the public to be informed what things are have been changed, and that's a, that's a change from the current regulations. They can look at both of them. I mean, they can look at the existing one and look at the proposed one and see what the changes are. If they really want to do that. We we can talk at the end of this process about whether or not we want to take and make, try and make some summary of what the changes were. Um, but I, right now I'd like to finish going through the changes in the wording of the proposed regs. Okay. But it's most convenient if maybe Matt keeps a little side list of, uh, as we go through what, what those changes are that we may or may not want to disclose. I think it's more than just a little side list. Uh, it shows how um, significant it is. So, so it's, so it's that's so not really reasonable to ask the public to go into these documents and see what we've changed. Uh, Carl, my, my, my initial approach, uh, if everyone will recall, was I thought we owed the public a, a track change document. Um, yeah, yes, exactly. I agreed 100%. Uh, that was my initial approach. Um, I, I don't know how we can do that. And I think we set ourselves up, um, I mean, th th this is only going to be three, three, less than three pages long. 
I, I don't think, uh, oh no, it's, four, it's three and a half pages long. Um, so I don't think it's too much to ask, to ask people to, to, to look at the two documents. But again, I'd like to go back right now to um, going through the documents, uh, through this document and, and looking at uh, the recommended changes. Let's keep going. Okay, installation or placement of signage. It says no alteration or disturbance. Uh, I'm gonna accept his deletion of, of further elsewhere. Yeah, I think that's appropriate. Elsewhere. So, Mr. Chairman, on 1.2 along that same line, um, and uh, I'll, I'll keep bringing it up just so we're aware. Um, in the current regulations, 2.18, uh, we also said that there were that the disposal of sand, fill, brush, grass clippings yard waste, uh, household trash um, within the boundary of the conservation land is prohibited. Uh, um, and we, so we never, we never talk about those things, which are really quite prevalent. Um, you know, leaves and clippings and yard waste. Can I suggest something? Can we right. add, can we add, uh, can you scroll down how many, one point, whatever are there? Can we just add a 1.10 that says there is no dumping of any anything on town conservation land? There's no dumping allowed on town conservation land of any type of material. It's short and sweet. It's a lot shorter than this paragraph we got rid of. So I, I kind of like that, Ken. Uh, how do other people feel about Ken's suggestion? Love it. Sure. Yep, like it. Can we perhaps just add the word dumping after littering in section 1.2 instead of having a whole new section? Um, I mean, it says littering. Littering to me is anything yeah. that's not wanted there. So that would be yard waste. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. fine with me. I think that gets littering, the point across. Dumping. Yeah. Yeah. And I better. thought, I thought that one of the things I liked about Richard's, uh, draft here document was that we had a lot of redundant stuff in the original regulations uh you know that were other people's rules you know and other other regulations uh that were in laws and we included them in here and they didn't need to be in here and he eliminated all of that nonsense and i like that uh because it results in a much easier to read uh, uh a set of rules and regulations. So, um, um, maybe just can you can we just add one other thing? Dumping sure. of of any material. Yeah. Including yard waste. I don't think we need to put including yard waste, but just of any material or materials. Yeah. That would take care of the couches too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I'm um, in 1.3. Uh, first of all, I, I'm going to accept all of um, all of Adam's uh, in changes here. In 1.4, is that where he was? He's no, it's uh, I'm, I'm in 1.3. Yeah. Oh, well, swear. Mr. Chairman, we might say something with regard to work on the trails by some of our other groups. And, and then I'm going to propose that we say uh, under, uh, it says, uh, with the exception of municipally owned vehicles, I'm, I'm accepting, um, I am proposing we add authorized maintenance vehicles. Right. That's good. Right here.
Is there no exemption for that already, Bob, in 2.3? I have, I don't, didn't see one. Let's okay. let's go down and look at 2.3. Then you have authorized. And thank you, and I'll go back. No, there's nothing in there. It's it's. And actually, I, we did discuss this at the last meeting, authorized maintenance vehicles. Uh, where this is our property, we can authorize any vehicles we want. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we would have a, a call out for it. Again, it goes to that redundancy part. We're the ones authorizing the vehicles. So but I don't know a, why we wouldn't have it in our rules. I mean, it does say no motorized vehicles are allowed. Mm -hmm. Except for... Unless except for right except for municipally owned vehicles and emergency vehicles which can go on at any time right it's our property we're going to authorize maintenance vehicles when we see fit but yeah. i don't think it needs to be in the regulations i mean the regulations don't preclude us from doing anything as a commission that's legally uh, allowed on our property and so again, again i just thought it was redundant when we brought it up last time too and and I, I I my personal view is that it's not redundant. Um, that uh, um, I remember you saying this last time, and and I thought about it, and, and that's why I'm proposing this in, insertion. Um, do we need a straw poll on this? I, I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. I think that's appropriate to put in there. I would also, Mr. Chairman, I think that if to say nothing else is almost too exclusionary, so at least we'll leave the door open with regard to our own maintenance vehicles. But again, we don't have to leave the door open to us allowing maintenance. It, you know, these are rules that a, a bystander picks up. These are what they can do on the property. These are what they can't do on the property. You know, as far as us being the, the custodians of the property, we can allow whatever vehicles we we need to do whatever we want to do on the property so to, to let's say that in there means that you know we're picking up these regulations and following them as well again it just in my mind it just goes to redundancy i'm not as bob likes to say i'm not going to die on this hill if we want to add more language to it we certainly can i just don't think adding three words is going to i mean it doesn't significantly impact the length of the document. Um, are we going to accept no use of firearms are allowed in these properties? He crossed out pursuant to town by bylaw. I don't know why, but I'm going to accept it. And elsewhere. We have paintballs and BB guns in there anywhere? No, we deleted yeah. that. That was one of my points. Was did we do that on purpose? I, I, I think we should have it. Yeah. So. Um, but could we could we stick with the 1.4 as it is for a second? Sure. Uh, the, the no use of firearms. Um, I think this is where we should address: is it no use, or do we just not permit firearms? I think I heard last night that we we can the, our current regulation, which has been in place for at least 10 years, I don't know if anything's come back further, is um, deemed okay with uh, at least our legal. So if we just change 1.4 to you know, no firearms or explosives are, are permitted, then that would cover both, I would think. Joe, can somebody bring, I didn't have a chance to watch the selectmen's meeting last night. Can someone bring everybody up to speed on what Carl's talking about? Uh, well, basically, what I, I sent uh, the uh, <coughs> uh, legal opinion uh, that Adam uh, had prepared for uh, at Heather's request. 
you know, on reaction to Jim Marino's and uh, uh, Michael Ray Jeffrey's concern that we were um, uh, banning the possession of firearms. And, um, um, and so, uh, you know, and that his, his legal opinion was consistent with what he's been telling us all along is that we're perfectly within our rights uh, to ban the possession of firearms. And, um, um, and that's basically what happened last night is, you know, he shared that with uh, Michael, you know, with, with, the, with the select board. I would concur with you, Mr. Chairman. That, that was clearly what he stated. It's within our purview. And uh, if we decide to uh, disallow any kind of firearms, go ahead. Um, is that the I, I would propose, Mr. Chairman, we simply get rid of the word use and just no firearms, explosives, and maybe we had back in the BB, BB guns and things I, are allowed on these properties. I, I guess, can we can we have a discussion about this for a second? Yeah, for sure. Go ahead, Ken. I, I think, first of all, explosives and fireworks are already illegal in the state of Massachusetts. So I, I think, to me, we don't need to add that in because we don't prohibit any other illegal activities in this document. Um, they're already illegal. You can't have them. They're not allowed anywhere. Um, so I would propose that we take those two words right out of there. Um, and the use of firearms, uh, I mean, this is a debate we've been going back and forth with. Um, so I, I think that's, we need to talk about that. Well, but the approach we've taken is we've said, um, we're gonna allow firearms uh, on three properties. You know, one that we have to and, and two others, you know, uh, that's at our discretion. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that, that's true and below, but in this paragraph, we're just saying what, you know, the, I think the, the debate that we need to have are, is do we allow firearms on these properties under this paragraph? Below, we're going to exempt it or, in, or, or not. But in this paragraph, do we simply say no firearms, explosives, BB guns, pellet guns, whatever, are allowed on the properties as opposed to use? Would we allow uh, somebody to wear a sidearm and walk the trails or carry a rifle? Uh, well, I mean, so so carrying a rifle, yeah. it, it's not it's not allowed. It's not an open carry state. You can't carry a rifle on on anywhere in the state of Massachusetts. You can carry a concealed weapon if you have a license to carry. Mm -hmm. If you're hunting, you can carry a hunting weapon, which is usually a shotgun. Um, so I, I, we're getting into the weeds here, but I, I think that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, we should not be precluding people from carrying that are licensed to carry in the state of Massachusetts a firearm on town property. I'm going to call on Rich Birch. He's got his hand up. Ah, well, the first off, uh, where we got rid of the call out for the Lunarburg bylaw that stated no use of firearms, explosives, or fireworks. Uh, that's why that whole sentence was there because it was just a rebroadcast or reprinting of the town's bylaw. If we're not gonna recognize the town's bylaw, then I would certainly agree with Ken that there's no need to have explosives or fireworks listed on there because uh, they are not, as he so eloquently put, they are illegal everywhere in the state of Massachusetts unless you're properly permitted for it. Uh, as far as firearms go, I am an advocate of uh, properly licensed people being able to carry properly permitted firearms wherever it's legally permissible, um, if for nothing else is for uh, personal protection. Um, I would counter the um, trying to exempt the 
carrying of firearms on the property as it technically is in my mind no reason to uh, take that right away I mean we have no problems as a as a as the property is used now so without a reasoning for just getting rid of the uh, being able to carry firearms on a property there's, there's no reason to get rid of it at this point now we haven't had an issue with it it, it is allowable in the state of massachusetts it's allowable on other public properties so i don't know why we would be um singling it out on these properties at this point um i agree with richard uh on this um I don't see that we've had a problem with people carrying uh, firearms. I think that, um, you know, I, you know, Ken described a very, Ken's a lot more familiar than I am about, you know, that if you have a, the whole thing about open carry versus concealed and uh, I, I just don't see it as an issue. And it is a, a lightning rod issue for uh you know uh for uh some members of the public so uh, and and for at least two members of the board of selectmen mr chairman yes sir where we've uh essentially we're going in the direction and i'm of having essentially three hunting areas i've had a chance to talk to to a number of people that said that's great I just don't want to be near anybody that's going to be hunting. So they're in support of having separate designated areas. I've also heard from people that they're not happy with uh, people walking around with any kind of guns. And I didn't know, Ken, that uh, the state of Massachusetts does not allow you to carry a rifle with you. I mean, you can't just walk around. You can't go into a grocery store carrying a, yeah, it's an AR-15. Right. You, Right. Walmart said you can't do it. No, I mean, the state law says you can't do it, Jack. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I just, uh, if that so, is. So Massachusetts, if you're licensed to carry in the state of Massachusetts, it has to be concealed carry. You yes. can walk into a police station with a, with a sidearm if you're licensed to carry. Okay. You can, people in the bank might have them. In the grocery store, you don't know because it's concealed mm -hmm. carry. And that's the okay. whole point of that, that law. Is to, Okay. Mr. Um, Chairman, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call uh, Rich. Were you done? I am done now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Carl. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't understand. We're, we're talking about the, the possession of firearms on, on conservation land, I believe. Um, I, yep. so I got confused by you and Richard because you said, well, we, why, why would we change it? We haven't had any problems, but the fact is we're recommending to change it because it, we haven't had any problems, perhaps, because the regulation is that you cannot carry firearms on conservation Good point. land. So we're talking about changing it, not talking about not changing it. And, and, and this is a, another one of those issues. I, I just don't see the compelling reason. It's been in there for at least 10 years that you can't carry, you can't possess firearms on the conservation land. There's been no problems, as you and Richard acknowledge. Uh, so why would, where's the compelling reason to change that? Uh, we know that some people are going to be nervous just knowing that people can carry firearms and we want people to be comfortable on the, on the, uh, on the land and they've enjoyed this regulation, whether it made a difference or not, why take it away? Thank, thank you, Carl. I get my um, Perhaps it's time for a straw poll, Mr. Chairman, so we can move forward. I'm, I'm not going to do a straw poll without Jeff here. Um, okay. On this issue, this is a hot button issue. Um, if we're going to do a straw poll on this, it's going to have to uh, occur uh, after our public hearing on uh, the 17th, if, unless uh, so, someone object uh, on this issue. You know, uh, you know, seeing as how. Although we could do a straw poll and see what happens, but um, Carl, how do you feel about this? But, but well, but I, I I I appreciate your um, your feeling about the straw poll and without any everyone here, but, but maybe I misunderstood. But when we put these regulations together, this draft, 
and we got to the point of possession, um, rather than carrying it, we decided to just put it aside until we heard from legal. Through that. Uh, I, I thought that when, when we heard from legal, if legal said you couldn't do it, then great, it's out. And if, if they could do it, then it would be in. So, I, so, I'm not sure so what what's your vote, control. Carl, here? You want, to, you want us to continue to ban the possession, am I right? I want to, yes, I want to keep this regulation the thank, same. Thank you, Carl. Jack, how do you want to do? What do you want to do here? I think there's room in the middle, but right now where we are sitting, I would su not support uh, any kind of firearm in those areas that we have not authorized firearms to be carried. So therefore, I would say no, let's go back, no firearms. And then Rich? we- uh, I'm in favor of 1.4 as written. Uh, Carl, I'm sorry, uh, Katie? I agree with which I'm in uh, favor as it's written. And uh, so am I. Uh, and Ken Jones. And, Ken Jones. And I am in favor as well of it right. the way it's written. And so uh, right now it's uh, uh, two to four. And um, there's one member who's not present. And he was, uh, I think I know who he vote, but I, I wouldn't want to speak for him. But nonetheless, we're going to move on to 1.5. Mike has his hand up. Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, go ahead, uh, Mike LaRouche. Yes, I realize I don't have a vote. Yes, uh, let's hear what your, what, what's, I'd like to hear, know your opinion. Yeah. I, I, I concur with Carl uh, and also with you, Bob, that you said you're gonna check with legal and legal, uh, essentially, I wanna agree with them. If we have a right, uh, I, I wanna go with what the legal, um, group has said that we can do on our land. So um, I, that's my vote, if I had a vote. All right, we, your opinion always counts, and, um, but um, that'd make it four to three. Okay. Um, 1.6. 1.5, I think, actually. One, yeah, are there any changes oh, there's no in 1.5? No, yeah, you're right. There's no changes. There's no changes. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we, we, we dropped the whole uh, pellet BB gun discussion. Which would and so, kind of ball. so you want to say the use of firearms, uh, paintballs, and is not allowed in these properties? You want to add a new thing? What do you want to do here? BB guns, pellet guns, paintballs. Yeah, the current regulation says the carrying or discharge of BB guns, pellet guns, paintball guns, air soft guns, and similar non-lethal weapons is prohibited. You want to add that in? That up. I, I, I would recommend adding it in. Yeah. Those are things uh, that I have no happen. trouble with that. It's probably a good idea. We certainly don't want paintballs out there. It was 216 in the uh, original uh, if that helps you, Mr. Chairman. Let me see if I can uh, call that up and copy and paste it rather than trying to reinvent the wheel here. I don't think it's necessary to add that back in there. You don't? Uh, how do you feel about it, Rich? No, I would just list it in 1.4. No use of firearms, pellet guns, paint guns, or other projectile weapons. How do you feel? How do other people feel about that? I agree with Rich. Use of fi firearms. like that projectile weapons rich good job i don't think a pellet gun or a paint gun is a projectile weapon necessarily so i don't know other about. projectile the, the language in the original one was non uh similar non-lethal weapons are prohibited yeah hey my pellet gun reaches the velocity of a 22 shell a short shell so they're pretty lethal if you get somebody in the right spot so is a rock. 
Yeah, it's true. A big one. <laughs> yeah, I would question that it has the velocity of a 22 short. Uh, that's just what they sold me. Yeah, I would question that. I could pump that sucker up to 10. And yeah, all I know I would is still, I would still question it. Yeah. So would I. I mm. know if I shot somebody in the neck, it would go through their neck. Now, whether or not I took an artery out or something, I don't know. I bet if I hit him with a stick, it would do the same thing. <laughs> it's We're going to ban sticks. All right. You got you, you guys are getting a little rough here. <laughs> I'm glad we're on Zoom. <laughs> so the uh, how do people so the use of firearms, pellet guns, paint guns, or similar non-lethal weapons is not allowed on these properties unless exempted elsewhere in these regulations. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Well done. Yep. I don't know if it's beautiful. It's painful for my end here. I can't get rid of this. I can't accept my own insertion here. That's why you make the big bucks, Bob. No one told me this place, this, this position paid. <laughs> <laughs> the town of Woburn pays their chairman $100 a month. Wow. That's outrageous. <laughs> um, dogs. Uh, let's see what his his changes uh, do. No dog shall be allowed that are not under direct control of their owner or designee designees the person accompanying dog shall promptly remove feces deposited by the dog on conservation land. So we good with it, that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Only, only by observation that uh, probably 95% of the dogs are great. They love to see each other and some of them don't. Uh, and I know that if you get a dog fight, it's tough to separate the dogs. Do we want to ask the owners to somehow if within a hundred, if they're within a hundred feet of the dog, they have to put them on a leash or just somehow restrain them? I'm not interested in that. Um, I'm not overly interested. I just know that it does happen. And I think that the first sentence, you know, the dog needs to be under direct control whether it's a verbal control or a leash or whatever it is, it's, it, you know, I, that I've should been, cover everything. Yeah, I've been down trails and I see the dog long before I see the owner. And sometimes I'm not so sure about the dog, but. So that's, that wouldn't be under their direct control then. Right, right. So. I'm saying keep them in Technically they'd be in violation. Jack, is there is there any such language uh, on the town's bylaw or under dogs, Jack? I haven't, Rich. I haven't gone there and looked. I just came up with that this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. You know, if you keep within 100 feet, you're probably going to be able to keep them under your direct control. Yeah. Not, I would not be in favor of adding anything that goes above and beyond the town's bylaw. Yeah, I don't know what's on the bylaw, Rich. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I did look into the bylaw just for that reason, Rich. And... Um, if you go to the bylaw, it, it, it does talk about control, but it, it talks about that it's, it's not permitted to run it large strain. Um, not permitted to, I couldn't so hear you. If you, go to, if you go to the, the bylaw, you, you're, you're supposed to really be on a leash. They don't, they don't give you a lot of wiggle room. Can you repeat does, that, Carl? Does it you stay broke a up. leash? The, the language in the bylaw um, says that they're not permitted to run large and unrestrained. They never talk about leash, but they talk about run at large and unrestrained. Then I would say at this point, we were, we're covered if they have to follow the town's bylaw. I don't personally see any reason why we need to re, yeah. rewrite it. Yeah, I, I, I would agree.
All right. Under exemptions, Adam says that the sentence, the commission reserves the right to permit any passive recreation activity on a case by case basis. He says this is confusing. Why is this uh, why is this required? What are our thoughts on, 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 on this statement? Rich, Rich, you're the author of this. What do you think of this? Uh, basically, I just put it in that says that we have the ability to exempt uses that we have um, restricted. Uh, I know that in our regulations uh, under the, the WPA, we have to give ourselves the ability to waive the regulations. That's why I had added that in here, just to restate that we have the ability to uh, waive the restrictions that we've placed. Yeah. If it's not needed, then we don't need it. But we never know what we're gonna run up against. I like the clause, Rich. I don't have any trouble with it either. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any comment on that? Nope. Um, Come on. Phew. Um. Who's going to notify the Matt? Did you were you able to take and uh, develop an overnight form? Uh, yeah, I just didn't put it on the cloud. So in the in the form, um, does it say who's got to notify the police? No, I can add that one in. Okay. Because that will address Adam's comment about who's got to notify them. Because I think we should be notifying the police. Because that way they then they, they know. I, I mean, I think when I say we, I mean you, uh, our agent should be notifying the police, our, our conservation administrator, so that the police know that they've been uh, approved. I would agree with that. Um, yeah, I can add a section on the form um yeah kind of like when you have like a one of those boxes on a form that says office use only yeah you know like a check box police notified and then you just check it off and yeah, then the date they were notified that would be perfect honestly i would just eliminate that sentence bob or that would be my recommendation there's no reason to put that in our rules that the police are going to be notified um if it's going to be on the form and the applicant will be made aware of that, we will be notifying the police during the approval process. I don't know why it would have to be in the regulation or in, yeah, be in the regulation. How do you feel? How do other people feel about that? I would agree with that as long as it's on the form. So we mm -hmm. don't forget. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Matt, do you, do you, do you have the form? Well, can you take and send the commission the form prior to our public uh, hearing on the 17th? Yeah, that's no problem. All right, please do that. Mr. Chairman, on this paragraph, 
Um, the next line talks about if open fires are to be requested, um, and yet we lost the um, the state current regulation that no fires are allowed. So do, do we do we still believe there's no fires allowed unless requested? Is that what this is saying? You lost me, Carl. We don't have it. We don't have a up in the first section. It doesn't say hey, no fire drills or uh, as is in the current um, our current regulation, as I recall. So we don't say there are no fires, but down below we say that they have to be requested. But you can't you can't have an open fire on property that's not your own without a permit. So I think if people are going to be camping, then then they're on that form they're going to be requesting an open fire at, and it's going to be a cooking fire. It has to be approved by the fire department. So I, I, to me that this is appropriate to leave it the way it is. I, I think this is appropriate. It just reminded me though, that we haven't told anyone that fires are not allowed. I, I go back to the explosives and fireworks. It's not allowed anywhere without, you know, yep. you can't do it on property that's not your own without a permit. So. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, I, I understand, Ken, that there's a lot of laws out there, that, but there's a lot of people who don't know what the laws are. Um, and I, I would, I would I to hear that you, that you, that it's against the law to have a, a little campfire or a little, you know, burner um, on conservation. I, I now, mean, not a bonfire, but a cook a hot dog. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't know if people know that, you know. I guess I would go back to if somebody was actually dense enough to go out there and make a fire to cook a hot dog, they're probably not the people that are going to read the bio, the regulations <laughs> before they go out there on a property. Um, I, I, I am hoping that this will be covered by the form when we see Matt's form. Um, that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put that on the form. Matt? Yes. Can you have something on the form about, uh, you know, fires require uh, a permit from the fire department? Yep. Thanks. Can I, can I turn the page? Please yep. do. All right. Just one comment, Mr. Chairman, uh, it applies to several places, every place we say approval. In the, when we asked for legal's inputs on the base document, the, the original document, uh, our proposed changes, one thing he highlighted several times was to have the words that approval could be uh, revoked uh, at any time or say that anywhere here. Um, if it weren't reading his comments, I wouldn't have even thought about that. Should we consider putting something, even if it's a blanket statement, that approval can be revoked at any time. I'm sorry, Bob, while you're zipping through that, why did Adam have the snowmobile use statement highlighted? What was his comment? Okay, I'll, I'll, here it is. Okay. What about the statement and definition of passive uh, that snowmobiling may be considered passive only if the commission determines it's compatible with other activities? Much such a determine we made in each instance, even on trails marked for use. I presume not, but I am highlighting the inconsistency or potential for confusion. That was his comment. Such as Well, I guess by putting the statement in here, we've made the determination. I don't know why yeah, we'd have to yeah. do it on a case by case. Exactly. Okay. Yep, thank you. I just didn't get a chance to read it before you delete it. Uh, and, and I apologize for that. Can I can I delete it now? I'm good with it. All right. And by the way, um, on all the maps, uh, there's five color, there's actually six color trails. Uh, yellow and orange are open to snowmobiles. Uh, blue, green, and um, red are other hiking, are other trails, and then brown are trails uh, that are uh, 
town uh, right of ways over private lands. Uh, we got three of those in town. So uh, it's clearly going to show on all of our trail maps. Great. I'm going to accept all of these capitalization changes. If I can get the mouse to land on them. Drives me crazy. Hey, Matt, your chair needs some oil. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, are we good with the changes to traditional bow hunting as allowed on all conservation lands? Mr. Chairman? In accordance with Massachusetts law and regulations? Yeah. Go ahead, Jack. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, where we're determining that we're going to essentially end up with three hunting areas in town, uh, the uh, well, small town forest, the Northwest, Hunting Hill. Uh, a number of residents have asked me to, to essentially push the point that they would like to be able to walk in areas where there is no hunting. At the same time, uh, there is no designation as to what time of year they would be hunting. And therefore they were asking that, look, if you're gonna go with the let them bow hunt all they want there, but remove the bow hunting from areas such as the lane property, such that uh, people would feel more comfortable. And uh, by the way, the, the one of the things I read on the hunting hill, it said hunting is allowed, but it didn't designate what kind of hunting or what kind of weapon would be used, whether it's a bow or a shotgun or whatever. Actually, it's said in all legal forms, so oh, it covers forms. everything. All legal forms? I, yep. It's I said in all legal forms. Okay, I'll have to go back and look, Matt. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, I didn't see that, and I questioned that. So why nope. would No problem. Okay. And uh, so, therefore, have we designated what time of uh, year is bow hunting allowed? Uh, very limited bow hunting season. It amounts to what, about? Two weeks a year, something like that. There's a there's a bow hunting season for deer. Uh, there's a bow hunting season for turkey in the fall and the spring. That accounts like about two or I think it's like you know how much how long it is, Rich. Uh, I believe the turkey season is only a week or two. It's not a very long season. Yeah, that and, and I, I believe that also. Yeah, so turkey, the, very the, short and um uh, and that's all it is, uh, Jack. Yeah, and so the residents were concerned. They didn't, they weren't excited about supporting the bow hunting. And there's another contingent that also pointed out that uh, bow hunting is a really tough sport. You've really <laughs> you've got to be almost an adventurer. But also, it's a a brutal. Uh, it's it's not nice and clean like with a shotgun. Uh, the essentially the animals more often than not are not immediately brought down, and there's a tendency to have for the bow hunter to have to track them for quite a while. And some, and usually, usually I was reading with the NRA stuff. Usually they'll go down. Believe it, NRA writes about bow hunting, but uh, you know, you go, they go a couple hundred yards out and lie down until they're either prompted to move along and, and go along. So uh, there's a group of folks that say, "Look, we're going to give up use of our other lands, such the hunters can have that. We would like to have the hunters, bow hunters." use the same properties as the uh, folks who are doing the hunting with the shotguns and leave the rest of it open and certainly exclude any particular areas like the lane property specifically. I think we had even a couple of correspondents that said no hunting at all in the lane property and other, in other such places. I believe the Cowdery is one and uh, 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 not Bear Hill, uh, Rob's Hill. Is, is another one that was that was pointed out to me. I'm just okay, sure. we're going to do another straw poll, Jack. You 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 want to limit bow hunting to just the, the three lands with firearm hunting? We allow hunting to occur. Thank yeah. you, Katie. How do you feel about that? Um, I like to keep the bow hunting as it is now, which is um, on all conservation lands. So, okay, Rich. How do you feel about that? Uh, I am happy with 2.4 as written. Uh, Carl Luck. 
Um, I, I'd like to see something, if we're gonna take three properties away that are roughly uh, 500 acres, we're taken away from people who don't wanna be on hunting land. I, I feel we should at least discuss um, giving them something back and that would be some, some safe property. Maybe it's not everything, but uh, maybe it's 500 worth, 500 acres worth of uh, land where they know there won't be any hunting. Ken Jones? Um, in the interest of, you know, um, compromise, I think that Jack's suggestion of the lane property in the Cowdery lot, um, to, to ban all hunting on, I, I would go along with those two properties. Which properties, Ken? The lane property and the Cowdery. Uh, I have no trouble allowing bow hunting everywhere the way we do it now. Uh, how did that show up old, turn out? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I did just want to point out quickly that um, the vast majority of comments that we received, that there was absolutely no discussion or concerns about bow hunting. And I would like to ask Matt, as I did review the, the last group of comments that he did get in, um, there was a few of them that seemed to be missing pages in, the, in their comments. Uh, one in particular was from Peter Beardmore. His second page of his comment was not uh, on the cloud. No, I'll check on why that happened. Okay. Mr. Chairman, just uh, to that point. Go ahead, um, Carl. It's not, I'm not surprised uh, at, at all. Uh, this, this bow hunting was never mentioned until this evening. So I'm, I'm not surprised no one would have, would have talked about it um, uh, at all. Although we've got, you know, if we're, if we're concerned about people's input, we got way more input about people concerned about adding any hunting than we did about people um, wanting more hunting. Um, just, just, to, just to share with the commission, um, you know, some numbers. I mean, currently, um, under the current re regulations, there's 275 acres worth of land, co conservation land, conservation and state land uh, available for hunting today, um, which, which is um, about 11% of our, of our conservation land is, is huntable today. We're talking about, with the three properties below, adding another 500 acres of land to be hunted. Um, with firearms, you're talking about? With, with, with firearms, yeah, I'm sorry, Ken, thank you. Yeah, I'm purely talking firearms, but everything can be hunted with those. Um, so we're talking about adding another, another you know, 500 acres, which you know, brings, what we're talking about is 25% of our nation land is now um, shifted over to, to being hunted with firearms. Um, and I don't think it's unreasonable to at least discuss um, you know, creating some properties, um, maybe it's not 500. It, again, to scale it, if you take the Cowdery, Rob's Hill, and Lane, that's about 500 acres. So that's the kind of um, land that we're now adding to hunting. That people are going to, you know, some people are going to be nervous about it. right or wrong, safe or not. People are, are not don't feel safe. That's what counts. Um, so I, I think it's it's reasonable to, to open up a discussion about um, you know about setting some land aside that there is no hunting on of, of any form so people at least are confident that there's you know that there's not going to be any hunting because I do know people that you know are not using property because uh, even bow hunting is a, a concern with them for their children. Right, the establishment of sanctuary lands is pretty common in the state. Some towns don't allow it. They're all hunting. All right. Well, the, the sanctuary lands that are at least equal, uh, you know, to perhaps the areas that are hunted. Uh, the, the straw poll on the bow hunting thing was, uh, if I recall correctly, was uh, Rich, myself, and Katie uh, said we were good with having it everywhere. Um, Kyle and Jack and Ken said they were good with uh, restricting it from Cowdery and uh, the Lane property. Um, and so my suggestion is that uh, um, 
we, we leave it for now and uh, we take uh, and people can vote. We'll, we'll hear from the public on this on this issue at the public hearing and um, we'll also then have the opportunity to hear from uh, on Jeff on this issue. And Michael. Don't forget Michael. Oh, and Michael too. <laughs> you want my opinion now or later? Yeah, go ahead, Mike, go. Well, hey, you know I hiked the Appalachian Trail, right? Which is 2,000 miles. Yeah. And in my travels, I saw 500 white-tailed deer. At no time did I ever think about using a bow and arrow and killing any one of them, all right? I had a camera and I, I would shoot them with my camera and that's all I need to say. I think as a com uh, conservation commission, we should be thinking about different ways about uh, enhancing wildlife for people to see, not necessarily wanting to kill wildlife that might be on the trails. So that's my opinion. Well, I think if that's your opinion, we should also then be re re reintroducing gray wolves around here. Yay. I'm all for it. Yep. Because otherwise we're going to have more deer than we know what to do with. And the other thing about hunting, you know, do we want to encourage hunters from other communities coming into Lunenburg or uh, other states who have different kinds of uh, hunting laws coming on, coming to Massachusetts and taking uh, deer or other wildlife to service their uh, restaurants. Uh, I hear that's a big thing these days. So uh, just want people to think about some of those issues while you're thinking about um, hunting on conservation commission properties. I guess I don't remember us talking about advertising our lands for hunting, but. No, we did. But you have, if someone from Townsend. I don't, big, I don't think that's a big issue. You don't think people from Townsend come to Lunenburg to hunt? On Hunting Hill, they do. Okay. And so what if they do? Yeah, exactly. People from T Lunenburg go to Townsend to hunt. No, I understand, but. Yeah, I mean, we're still all citizens of Massachusetts and the United States. But there are also uh, hunters from other states that come into Massachusetts to hunt. And they're required to get a permit from the state. Yep, they are. So. But are they required to go to the Selectman, <laughs> Lunenburg Selectman? They would be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ge gentlemen. Let's move on. Well, I'd like to move on. Um, Adam asked this question, why not include the Hunting Hill Wildlife Management Area in the list above, i.e. properties where hunting or firearms is allowed? I specifically asked about the selectmen's meeting last night. You know, basically the reason I believe reason Rich did this is because his, um, his, his premise is that because the state because uh, the Board of Selectmen signed the conservation restriction uh, with the state back in 1999, um, that we were agreeing to let people hunt there without, without and no additional uh, permission is needed. Um, and he did not comment on that in his first way, uh, in his first time through. And I specifically asked about it at the meeting last night and he, said he wasn't prepared uh, to answer it, uh, to, to address it. So um, absent, you know, something from him to the contrary, I, I think we should leave it the way it is until we, we hear from him. He said he would be getting back to me on it. So um, are we okay leaving it like this way for now? I think so. Yeah. But I, I'm, I, I'll, when, once we hear from him, I, I expect to uh, he says and organize our activities to, uh, must be reviewed for he says it's vague. You know, what about horseback riding in a group? What about um, 
Go Does anybody to. have any suggestions on how we could come up with a better definition for organized group? What, what, what our intention is here? Make it clearer what our attention is, intention is. I don't, I mean, I, I well, can't. I the, the reason it, it's there that I put it there, sorry to cut you off, Ken. No, that's all right. Is that comes out of the definition of organized sports. So I guess we would have to delve into why organized sports are not allowed on passive, uh, passive recreation land and try to get that definition. So that may require a little bit more than just us hashing it out here tonight. Um, I mean, in my mind, an organized group is, you know, a group that has dues, has meetings, you know, they've, they've made a plan to have an activity and do it on this property, but I don't know how to um, verbalize that so that it jives with the uh, definition of passive recreation. Bob, that could be a good question for Adam. All right, let's ask. Hey, Rich, just a quick question. Uh, do our cross-country teams run on uh, conservation lands, on trails, or are they solely streets? I have absolutely no idea. Yeah. I mean, I know they run on town property. I don't know whether it's on, you know, conservation land or not. Right. Yeah, I don't know either, but we will ask. It'll be an organized group, yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we will ask Adam about that. Um, I was going to propose, I'm not sure why this 251 is inset. I was going to move it out. Um, I was going to propose a, a new rule that says uh, field dressing a deer must be at least 50 feet from marked trails. Um, I remember walking up small town forest and somebody field dressed a deer right in the middle of the path. Yep, I remember and, that. Uh, given people's aversion Given the strong, I, I, I just don't think if we're going to, I'm proposing that a rule of deer got to be field, field, field dressed at least 50 feet from a marked trail. Uh, uh, is there any, anybody else, anybody else support that idea, not support that idea? I would support that, Bob, without the 50 foot portion of it. I would, I would rather have it read out of sight of out the trail. Of sight. Because uh, having shot deer over 200 pounds, you're not dragging them very far. So I'm going to renumber this. I'm going to put this uh, 2.6. How would you suggest I write this? Uh, I would put it as 2.52. No, it's not an exemption. So what what would you do? What's your suggestion here? Should it be up? It should be up above where we allow. Where do we allow? Uh, yeah, these so are I would all put, put it Bob. Put it under two point five. Just add a second sentence. Or in parentheses. Yeah, I would add it just as a second sentence under two point five. It applies to bow hunting though too. Then I would put it in both. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I put it in both. Yeah. Field dressing of animals must be out of sight of trails. That okay? Yeah, I think that's fine. And then just copy and paste it into 2.5. Down here? 
Um, you know, I would put it before only on the following properties. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I don't think that makes sense to put it before the colon. No, so have it read hunting with firearms is only allowed by licensed individuals. Field dressing of animals must occur out of sight of established trails. Hunting may hunting is allowed only on the following properties. Hunting by firearms. Yep. Well, we're in the, yeah, we're in the hunting by firearm sections, but yep, yep, and then firearm hunting is only on the following properties. That's bold and underlined. Oh, this is painful. All right. You're doing a good job of it, Bob. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman? Just, yes, sir. Um, my education, um, I've, I've heard, and I think Richard knows, or maybe you do, that um, hunting um, with bow or uh, firearm is not allowed in the state on Sunday. Is that true? That is true. That, that, is, is that is true, and every hunter in the world knows that. Yes, and every mountain hunter yeah, in the world knows that. No who hunting in Massachusetts it, on Sunday. Who doesn't know it is the are the residents who are concerned about hunting on on the property. So at least if we if we had that in here and made it clear to everybody, then I mean that's the day that they know that there is no hunting on conservation land. I don't think I don't think many people that aren't hunters know that. I, I didn't. But that's why I, I want to confirm it. I can I can I make a suggestion that when we put out, you know, because we've talked about putting out information about, you know, the changes and in the future, you know, publicizing mm -hmm. where hunting is allowed and where it's not allowed. Maybe we could put that in there that, you know, as per the state law, there is no hunting on Sunday. So I, maybe not in the re in this document, but in some educational document that we publish would be a more appropriate place for that. It would calm the water, certainly. And perhaps we even add there would be no discharge within 500 feet of a, a residence or something. Now, now we're starting to put all the hunting laws into our regs. Right, I don't think we need to do that. Yeah, but something that's gonna calm the waters. Yeah, I'm Ken, Ken's suggestion is good. I guess I think we've got an awful lot of work to do if we go forward with this and it gets through. I think we've got a lot of work to do with, with at the kiosks and the entrances to our, our things to let people know, um, you know, what what's going on. People that aren't well, hunting. For, 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 for starters, we would put uh, it on the maps, um, you know, of the individual things, you know, which which uh, properties are allow firearm hunting and which and which don't. Mm -hmm. um, so well, let's let's get back to this. Um, now I accept all of his changes here.
So now it reads down trees or limbs or vegetation encroaching into the trails may be removed from existing trails by hand using hand pruners or a hand saw. No power tools may be used and no digging or excavation routes may occur. Um, for approval to maintain trails further, please contact the con uh, con conservation administrator. Are we good with that? Yep. Um, I'm gonna accept these capitalization things. Bob, can I make a quick suggestion regarding yes, sir, the uh, trail maintenance? Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm not suggesting to put this in the regs, but as far as the administrative procedure goes, if you're going to leave it up to the administrator, being myself or whoever winds up taking my place in the future, perhaps you should incorporate that into your administrator's determination procedure. Whereas if the administrator approves it, he brings the administrator's determination to a follow-up meeting so that the commission can review it as well so that they're informed as to what's being approved and that there's documentation in place. To That's a great suggestion, which would, re which would require a revision to our, um, can we do it by, is, is our administrator approval? I think we need to revise our, 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 our regs for that. Would really, you, you really don't because your administrator's determination has pruning. Yeah. Um, and items like that as part of your allowed list. This would just be a circumstance where yep. that form would be used, not a wholesale change in how it's applied. Uh, and one doesn't really have anything to do with the other. The, administ uh, the administrator's determination has to do with activities of the Wetlands Protection Act in this case here, contacting Matt is under our land use regulation. So we wouldn't have to, uh, we wouldn't have to adjust the wetlands regulations for Matt to That's have correct. that, that, that uh, ability. It's merely an administrative procedure, something you have documentation in place now that fits with it. And what I was just simply suggesting was that we use it administratively um to be consistent with the way we memorialize those small projects okay um under the old rules i had added two things about uh, mountain biking um and rich didn't include them and so we can include them here or not one was leaves may not be raked or blown off of trails um, some, a lot of places have trouble with guys, uh, or gals who come in and they think they're going to improve the mountain biking by, uh, raking or blow, they, they go through the trails with a leaf floor, blowing the leaves off the trails. Um, and I was going to suggest that we explicitly prohibit that. Um, and I, I was going to suggest that we explicitly prohibit the installation of mountain biking jumps or uh, stunts, but if people don't want to do that because they think it's covered elsewhere, I'm good with that too. I mean, what are people's thoughts? I don't think we need to include it, that. I thought we were going to include it, so I would be okay with it. I would think at least the construction of any jumps or anything like that would be covered under the Excavating, digging, yep. dumping, yep. littering. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman? Um, yes, sir. I just, um, you know, Mr. On 313, I think you accepted the, uh, the change that's required um, in advance notice. Yep. There's a similar, in two, I, maybe I missed it. In, 2.6, there's a similar comment that I, I don't know if, the, if Adam made the comment to. Yeah, you see, it says, you know, must be reviewed for approval. I think that, that those words are what we just changed below because it needs to be approved, right? For some reason, Adam didn't comment on that, that those phrases. Up here, up where we changed it below. 
but I think that's supposed to be to be approved, not reviewed for approval. That, that's uh, I agree with you, Carl. Good catch. Thank you, Bob. I'll have to tell Adam you caught something he missed. <laughs> I'm in enough trouble. <laughs> you are. Thank you, Carl. You're welcome, Bob. Enforcement. I propose to accept all of these uh, insertions and deletions and stuff that he's got here. Yep, those are all basically just. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to talk about as far as these regulations? Then, um, Matt, I'm going to take send them out to everybody as both a PDF and a uh, Word document uh, right after the meeting. Um, can you uh, delete all the prior uh, draft regs off of the website or have Adam Bernie do it or uh, Steve, um, how you ever pronounce his last name? Melandrinos, yeah. That one and put these up uh, tomorrow. Okay. I believe Adam Bernie can do that in, in his role as webmaster. Uh, but if not, can you have Steve do it? You know, so take all your, we got three drafts up there. Take them all down and, and have put just this one up. You got it. I'll send this out to everybody. Uh, immediately after we adjourn as both a PDF and as a, um, um, and a, as a Word document. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I got to accept this. Shoot. File. Save as. What's today? Today is, oh. Two, oh, three. three, 2020. One. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> You're still doing that? Yeah. I think the only time I've missed the 2021 was on this agenda, on that one spot with the minutes. Okay. Back, um, Trails Grant. I already gave a status report in the trails grant at the beginning. I've been feeling, I've been feeling like I was behind the eight ball on that for the longest time, and I'm I, I'm very thrilled that we're I'm, I'm I've got to the point where um, I think we're ready. I'm ready to go to the public uh, probably in the next uh, week or two. Uh, certificate appliance. Tell us about that, Matt. Sixty three prospect. Twenty one okay. questions. So 63 Prospect, that was the house that Ken Matson had built. We had the violation that uh, the gentleman that now owns the house, Nick Ranieri, um, cut in the 50 foot zone. We had him do the planting and the reestablishment. That all took. Um, everything looks beautiful. Um, we have the as built on file from Anthony Cleves from Wooten of Bingham as required. So my recommendation is for the issuance of the certificate. I'm looking, I'm looking for a motion. Uh, I did have one quick question before we got that far. Yes, sir. I know we had had several conversations on the um, the drainage well that ran down the the northeast side of the property. Uh, did we ever get a, a conclusive fix for that? Yeah, Matson went back in and repaired it. Okay. And that's all taken. Yes, it has actually. It really, I mean, I, I actually was out there, I want to say back in the mid-summer, took a look at everything. Um, 
I was just curious as to how the trees were doing. And Nick told me he didn't mind if I went on the property just to look. And everything looked beautiful. I was very impressed. Okay, um, now, now the, the, the trees, I could see the, the termination area of the drainage swale. I could not. Yeah, no, I walked out. I walked around the back and took a look at everything. Uh, I was very impressed. The owner did a very good job of making sure everything was stabilized and maintained after all the work was done. Perfect. Thank you. So I'm still looking for a motion. I would make a motion we issue a certificate of compliance for a 63 Prospect Street. We have a second. Come on, somebody second it. Second. Thank you. Roll call vote. Ken Jones. Aye. Rich Bursch. Aye. Katie Childs. Oh, Katie Chiz no longer with us. K Carl Luck. Hi. Uh, Jack Rabbit. Hey. And I, I for she, myself. I think she's just muted. Oh, is she? Katie. Oh, sorry, Katie. You raised your hand. Let me in. Let me in. Uh, Katie, I asked you to unmute. Hi. And I'm going to take <laughs> off the mute everybody thing so people can unmute themselves. Perfect. Oh, we're so close to you. 21 Crescent Terrace. Tell <laughs> us about that certificate of compliance. Okay, so that is a very old file. Uh, it was, I had to um, reconstruct it, which I did quite successfully. That was a uh, uh, an order of conditions that was granted in, no, let me just pull out the file here. It was granted in uh, 1994, DEP number 208-339. It was for the construction of a single family home on an empty lot. To date, the lot remains empty. Um, the construction was never carried out. Um, so what I'm asking for is a certificate of compliance based on an invalid order of conditions where the project never commenced. Anybody uh, have an issue with that? Nope. nope. Someone gonna make that motion? So moved. Second? Second. Uh, Ken Jones? Aye. Rich Bursch? Aye. Katie Childs. Aye. Carl Luck. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. And I for myself. And everyone can unmute themselves if they need to from the rest of the meeting, which is almost over. Extension per permit, DEP, Hickory Hills Lake. Tell us about that, Matt. Okay, so I asked that that be placed on the agenda. Um, I, I believe, Bob, you and I discussed it a couple of yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, you're right. We did. We did. The, um, the, the way the governor's uh, emergency declaration was written, all orders of conditions that were due to expire actually don't expire until after the pandemic emergency. And even in December, when the governor reinstituted the 21 day statutory deadline, um, in checking with Adam Costin, I believe Bob, we were, you were in on that meeting. Adam told me that the, the, the governor did not change that section on the orders of conditions and other permit approvals. So. The order actually is still valid until the emergency declaration is lifted. When that is, I don't know. But I asked Adam Costa if it was prudent to just put it on the agenda, have you guys vote to approve the extension now pending the lift of the emergency declaration. That way, administratively, everything is clean because they did request it under normal circumstances, which would have been 30 days prior to the expiration of the original permit. So I'd like to have all the mechanisms in place so that when the emergency declaration is lifted, you guys can just sign off on it and I can issue it. Any questions or comments about that? Uh, Matt, is this the order of conditions that they're currently using for the, um, the, weed, the weed control? That is correct. So like Trinity, yep. So this is the lake management plan uh, order? It's the lake management order of conditions, yes. Anything further, Rich? Um, yeah, just that I'm going to vote no, because unfortunately, I don't feel that their original application uh, covered the current use of the herbicides that they're using. I think that should have been an, an additional order of conditions that was never uh, part of their original application nor was it ever reviewed properly by this commission nor the public in a public hearing setting 
seeing as how you asked prior to me voting. Thank you. I learned something I never mind. <laughs> uh, I'm looking for a motion to approve a, uh, an extension uh, of a permit for Hickory Hills Lake until when, Matt? Um, I probably give it, I don't know how many years you guys want to give it. You can give it one, two or three years. I'd like to give them one year. I, I don't think, uh, I mean, well, I don't agree with Richard's uh, concern. Um, I, I do think we should just give it for one year. Yep. I would support that. You gotta make Well, I mean, that, would, that year would take effect after the emergency was <laughs> lifted. So I think it's more than fair. So, so I would, we have a motion. I would move that we allow the Hickory Hills Lake uh, to achieve an extension uh, one year past the COVID declaration, emergency declaration date, whenever that, whenever that closes. I, I didn't catch that, Matt. We when, don't know. When the emergency expiration, when the emergency declaration expires. Right. So one year after the expiration of the declaration. We have a second. Second. All right. All those in discussion? favor. Discussion. Further Mr. discussion. Further discussion. Um, I, I'm thinking about what Richard said and and remember and reflecting on the process. And it was it it it, it was not a very good process. I, I remember clearly. We were kind of caught by surprise by by switching to the chemical. I, I think they did a good job, and I it looks like they're still doing a good job. But I, I'm not sure. Um, I. I don't think it's support this extension at this time. I don't know when the emergency will be over. Um, I think we have time to, to review um, and to make sure that you know we're, we're happy with everything and address Richard's questions. So I think it's, in this case, it's premature to provide an extension from some date uncertain. Uh, just the, this program just getting going. So I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't support it at this time. Okay, Mr. Chairman, just to terms of open discussion, I believe that that issue came up when we we're going through the initial approval. And we actually went through a whole series of exercises to make the community aware, uh, the Hickory Hills community and the surrounding this 500 homes. And so I think that uh, they did meet the requirements in terms of communi community notification, certainly of butter notifications as part of that process. What part did, do you feel we, we, um, we didn't get? Um, there was no application presented to the commission or the DEP uh, calling out the herbicide program, the herbicides used, the techniques used, the testing regiment that was put in place. None of that was part of the original lake management plan nor was it presented as an amendment in this application form. Yeah. And that's all information it would have had to have been in an original application. Therefore, it should have been in the, um, it, it should have been presented as an amendment and it was not, it was just a notification seven days prior to application, which was not what it was for in the um, lake management plan, nor in our order of conditions. The order conditions was for algae control and unfortunately was not called out specifically that way in the order of conditions. So no, it was not presented as a, as a proper application. Oh, I do agree with Carl. It was done proper. It was done well. It was not filed for nor approved properly by the Lunenburg Conservation Mission or DEP review. Yeah, it, it, the commission had approved it as a field change, and I remember the objections were that, it, um, and I remember it came from you, Rich, actually, you felt it should have been an amendment. Yes, I abstained from voting. Mm -hmm. All right, is there any further discussion? Uh, roll call vote on this extension. Ken Jones? Aye. Uh, Rich Bursch? No. Katie Childs? Aye. Kyle Luck? No. Jack Rabbit? Aye. And I for myself.
Um, committee reports. I, I'm going to kick myself for this, but Jack, is the stormwater getting going again? I haven't heard a thing. I have heard a thing. I will, Mr. Chairman, I will get my button gear and see what I can get going here again. All right. Thank you. But thank um, you. Five Spring Street Extension. What's going on there, Matt? Okay, so that was the uh, the one we issued the emergency permit for. I went out with Jack and Carl. Um, the um, person we issued the emergency permit for has agreed to replant the tree and to replant the row of arborvitaes. One thing I did point out that the row of arborvitaes that would be planted along the boundary line actually would, because of the slope and the fl pattern flow from the abutting lot, would actually make a good vegetative buffer. Um, the trees that were there, there was one large tree that was dead. It did used to provide some, some type of shading, but um, I think just replacing that tree uh, on another portion of the lot, um, we could probably actually find a better spot for it. Um, uh, I'm thinking on the opposite side of the shoreline where there's absolutely no shade now from any trees um, would be a better placement. And the property owners have indicated um, more than a willingness to do that. They, they actually seem to be enthusiastic about the idea. So that's basically it. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add from the site inspection. I'd concur, Matt, good assessment. Um, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, I agree. Uh, Matt had uh, prized this of the uh, role of our varieties and the adding of the tree. Um, so I, I think the big tree that was removed, um, that was dead by the time it was removed, but was very large, was literally on the edge of the lake, you know, like, you know, three feet or, or so from the edge of the lake. Um, so certainly the place in that, because there's no trees left. I mean, these two lots, and it's really two lots. These trees are on two lots. It's not just five spring trees. It's the adjoining the next lot, too, which actually had the big tree. Um, so I think, um, you know, the removal was, uh, I have no problem supporting the agent's determination for removal, but I think what we need is to complete the picture. I think we need an RDA for the plantings um, to go in. I mean, they got to be doing a lot of digging and they need a, an RDA for doing all these plantings anyway. So um, I don't know, Matt, what, what do you think about what their plan was for, for um, formalizing committing to this uh, plantings that we've talked about? Well, I mean, honestly, it could it could have just been a condition of the emergency permit. Um, if you want an RDA to formalize it, I don't have a problem with that. Great. So what? I have a problem with that. There's no problem with that. that we would expect people to follow. What? What? What happened here? That was during the microburst we had. There was a dead, there was a very, it was a very large tree, but it was a dead tree. It split. The two other trees right next to it also split as a result of the microburst and were removed. The stumps were left in place. The other two trees, the, uh, the first stump, they, they actually went like in a, in a linear line yeah. going from the, the, the water back towards Spring Street. The other two stump, the other two stumps were like 47 feet out. So, so, Carl, why do you think an RDA is uh, uh, called for here instead of an administrator's determination? Because they're going to be doing work within the within the uh, buffer zone. They're going to plant a tree within 30 feet of the lake, so they're doing work. We would normally have an RDA. Is there anything thinking that if an RDA shouldn't be filed for digging and planting a significant number of trees near the lake? Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna have them file uh, an R RDA, Matt? Yeah, I can have them file an RDA if that's what you guys wanna do. I don't have an issue with that. Um, how do you feel about it, Ken? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, I mean, Carl brings up a point that if they're gonna be digging and they, you know, planting trees, they should be filing. Katie? That's fine. Yeah, we can do that. Rich? Agreed. Okay. Um, open space. Um, well, let me share this. Did I, I don't know if I already shared with you guys um, uh, 
this property here. It's in the middle of the cowdry. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, last week you did. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, follow up on that is uh, the assessor has agreed she's going to retake it uh, for back taxes. And so um, uh, so therefore, we'll probably be able to acquire this about a year and a half from now and make it part of the Cowdery lot. So because uh, she, she's going to retake it. And she's also going to take uh, over here. Um, we own this parcel, this parcel, and oh, come on, in this parcel. And uh, I'm after to take this parcel and this parcel, which will give us that, uh, not that parcel, that's Ken Chenis's house. <laughs> <laughs> He's glad to hear that one. <laughs> this parcel here. Um, which will give us access, you know, to, to these here. So I'm working with the assessor uh, uh, to take uh, and, and do that. Uh, and, this and, then, and as I mentioned before, I'm going to go through all of the lands that the assessor says belong to the Conservation Commission and see, do, the, do all of them have deeds, you know, or do we have some kind of formal action that says they are dedicated, you know, to the care and control of the Conservation Commission. Bob, can you tell me where this piece is again? Which piece now? The one you're talking about. This one right here? Yep. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's- uh, 731 Page Street. Yeah, but it's, these are, we've got five, we've got seven, three different parcels that all have the address of 781 Page Street rear. Okay, there's this one, this one, and this one. And they're all landlocked, except there's this parcel right here, if I can hit it, uh, that'll give us access. Um, it's 731 Page Street. And then there's this parcel over here. Um, and these are owner unknown parcels. Uh, zero old, term, old Turnpike Road right away. Uh, and that would take and that would give us get us closer to giving us access to this rear parcel over here, this landlocked parcel over here, and it would expand, expand, you know, uh, you know, these two parcels by however it's 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 like a half an acre or something like that. The thing I'm most interested in is this right away, not that that that, that this parcel here because that'll give us access, you know, to these landlocked parcels from the road. So uh, and it's owner unknown. So I'm working with the assessor on that. Matt, where are we with uh, Gary Goldrip and Forestry? Um, he submitted the cutting plan um, for the Reno property uh, to, uh, what do you call it, DCR. I'm just waiting for the approval on that. Okay. And he's finishing up the, um, the cutting plan that you guys wanted for uh, Hollis Road. So I have to get that to be reviewed. All right. The, um, what do you so call it? When do you think you'll be putting that on our agenda uh, for like the first week in March or? Yeah, first, I would say the first week in March. First meeting in March. Okay. Yep. Gary is in the middle of having those areas marked out. You guys had asked him to yep. consider, I believe, a connected trail in a parking lot, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And to avoid uh, um, the neighbors. Yes. And that's what he's looking to do. Super. Thank you. Uh, any other, uh, any public comments from the commission? Nope. Any public comments from the public? Um, uh, in our next meeting, I think I may uh, invite in, uh, we've got somebody who lives in town who did a GIS, um, a GIS study for their master's degree in which they identified a whole bunch of vernal pools in town using LIDAR. Um, I thought I might invite them in, and um, so. Um, you mean potential vernal pools? Yeah. Okay. And I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I think I am looking for a motion to adjourn. Um, oh. Real quick, you said next meeting. I thought next meeting was going to be the uh, open discussion with regard it, well that that'll be the first thing on the agenda oh okay 
it'll be a regular meeting, Jack, where the first public hearing is, um, you know, our land use regs. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Bob, I did have one quick question, seeing how you brought up vernal pools, and maybe I missed the meeting or slept through the discussion. I thought the folks down uh, in Rob's Hill area had determined or had some determinations on vernal pools. Did we ever get that information? I And I believe they have to submit that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. I, they said they had finished, finished gathering the data, and I believe they were supposed to take and um, submit it directly to the state, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, that was my last understanding. They did give me copies of the data. I actually had posted them in the cloud. Carl, I believe you actually reviewed them at one point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I took a walk through the, the uh, property and uh, found several of them. Even so, yeah, that no, was pretty good. Uh, just quickly, where is it in the cloud? Uh, it's probably in one of the meeting folders still. Uh, hold on a second. Let me look. All right. Well, I, I'll, if it's in there, I'll just look up vernal pools. I can find. I think it may be in the January meeting folder. Yeah, it's in the January meeting folder, the January 13th. Yeah. One. Yeah, I found it January 13th. All right, thank you. Super. Any other final parting parting ideas here? How about good night? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you so much. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So moved. Second. All right. Made by uh, Katie, seconded by Carl. Uh, all those in favor? Ken Jones? Aye. Rich Bursch? Aye. Katie Childs? Aye. Carl Luck? Aye. Jack Rabbit? Aye. Mike LaRouche? Aye. And I for myself. Good night, everybody. And I'll I will send that night, out. Uh, I'll send those regulations out in just a Good moment. Night. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you everybody. Night, guys. Thank you, Bob. Stay safe.